good utopia, unstoppable, yeah. tamper-proof, open platform for independent autonomy. Utopia is basically a decentralized uh, crypto cloud for the enterprise customers. This marks uh, a new direction, how we can grow the ecosystem of ICP. In Web3, we are targeting retail users for the most part. But actually, there's a much larger universe out there that is enterprise customers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 39th episode of Colors of Web3 and Entrepreneurship. My name is Lum, your Web3 host. Uh, for those of you who are new to the show, Colors of Web3 and Entrepreneurship is a show highlighting the journeys of builders and innovators in Web3 and entrepreneurship. Some topics expect in Web3 may get technical, but we do our best to keep it accessible for most people. And here I am today. I'm joined by Herbert Yang. He's the General Manager of Asia at Divinity Foundation. Uh, Herbert, can you give a quick introduction about yourself? Hello, Lem. Uh, hello, uh, all the friends and uh, and uh, and the entrepreneurs of Web three of uh, of this wonderful podcast. Uh, thank you, Lem, for having me. Um, uh, this is Herbert. Uh, I'm the general manager of Asia for uh, Definity Foundation. So, um, Definity Foundation is the primary developer behind an uh, Internet Computer Protocol, or we call the ICP, one of the major uh, layer one blockchain networks in the world. Uh, but I can go deeper than that. But this is just a very brief um, who I am, what I do. Awesome. Cool, cool. Yeah, of course, we will deep dive into a lot of that. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think before we begin to that, I think people will probably be interested in learn about your background, like what you did before, uh, I guess, what you did before Web3. Because, and then oh, maybe sure. what you yeah. did that lead up to this current position. That would be Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, more uh, more background of my uh, about myself. So uh, I joined Definitive Foundation uh, three years ago. Um, so in my current role, I'm um, uh, I'm the general manager of Asia. So my job is to grow the ecosystem of ICP. That that is actually very similar to uh, to to the job that I did before joining Definitive, where I was hmm. with uh, Amazon Web Services. Oh, so I was with I was the head of startup for uh, AWS, uh, Greater China. And uh, my job uh, in that role was also to grow the startup funder ecosystem for AWS, right? Mm. So it's a, very, it's a very different world, but there are a lot of similarities. And then before AWS, I've had um, many years of 20 plus years of experiences in, uh, in the internet technology and also financial services. I started my career, well, my, my college in Singapore. So I, uh, I actually graduated from uh, National University of Singapore many years ago as a scholar from uh, Ministry of Education of Singapore, then joined General Electric, you know, one of the, one of the largest uh, uh, companies at the time. Yeah. Uh, as a management trainee, uh, I, did a, I did 10 rotations in Europe, Japan, also America. Then uh, I joined my wife in um, Chicago and Boston, eventually spent a couple of years in Boston where I was working for G uh, GE Capital. Hmm. So GE Capital at the time was one of the largest financial institutions uh, in the world. Um, yeah. Of course, since, 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 uh, since took a very different turn um, in uh, 2008. So yeah. that's, when <laughs> I, uh, that's when I figure, you know, for those of you who still remember what happened in 2008, that was a, that was that a was horrendous. A very, <laughs> yeah, that was a very <laughs> bad year. <laughs> for, very bad year for many people, for, for many of my friends. So, uh, um, so I was, um, then I, I, uh, I changed, uh, I changed to quite a different track. I, I went back to China, uh, because all these years I've always been in Singapore or America mostly. But then, uh, in 2008, I went back to China and became uh, the CFO of one of the major TMT startups at the time in, uh, in Beijing. Uh, so I spent a couple of years in Beijing. I was a CFO for two very, uh, very substantial uh, TMTs there. Um, and that was a go-go years, you know, for, uh, for China. It was a uh, Beijing Olympics. Mm. As we are watching the Paris Olympics, I was, yeah. uh, <laughs> I couldn't, you know, I can't help thinking about 2008 to the Beijing Olympics. <laughs> that yeah. was pretty epic by all, by, by all measures. Um, and that was a, that was a, that was a golden era sort of for Beijing. You know, people are raising, companies are raising money. Uh, you have all the, uh, all the, all the talents from different, different walks of life. 
Um, but then after a couple of years, I went back to America. I went to uh, Stanford, uh, did, a, did a master degree in a graduate school of business in Stanford um, and got to know uh, even more friends, you know, in, uh, as, a, uh, as founders, as investors. Then I also did my two, uh, another two startups in the Palo Alto. I was living in Palo Alto, California for five years. So I was a, I was a bit of a um, back and forth between uh, Singapore, America, and China. China. And then about six years ago, um, I, I came back to Asia. I came back to Asia. I first joined this uh, startup in Hong Kong as a CEO uh, of this animation movie studio. Uh, that was incubated by the Great Ego Group of Hong Kong, um, and then uh, and then I joined. Then I, uh, I came to Hong, uh, Shanghai, uh, joined my wife, and then uh, uh, Amazon Web Services. So it's a bit of a zigzag um, pass uh, that led me to this role. Uh, but I guess your, your question, Lem, is you know you know what led up to to my current job, right? How yeah. did I end up here? Um, so I got to know uh, Definitive Foundation uh, in 2017 when I was, uh, even before I joined uh, at AWS. So at the time okay. I was in uh, Palo Alto and I heard about this startup that just raised a crazy amount of money from Anderson Horowitz and the Polychain, you know, the two largest um, VC uh, uh, crypto yeah. fir firms in, uh, in this industry. And this, uh, this startup had the aud audacious claim that we want to disrupt AWS. You know, those are, like, wow, this is a, <laughs> this is a very, <laughs> very, aud very audacious claim. Yeah. Uh, so that got me interested. Uh, I talked to the one, uh, one of the co-founders of Definity. Um, this seems really interesting. You know, all the, there was no Web3 conversation at the time. It was all about blockchain and crypto. Um, so I, I wanted to join back in 2017. Okay. But then after uh, talking to uh, the people in the in Divinity at the time, I realized it was too early for me. You know, you know, for those of you who may or may not be familiar with the ICP, um, Divinity Foundation launched the mainnet for Internet Computer Protocol in May 2021. So, mm. uh, so, so that was quite a, quite a, quite a few years afterwards. Yeah. So, uh, so, so I was too early. So, okay, that's fine. You know, I will, I will, ch I will check up on you guys in a couple of years. <laughs> so that's how I went back to, uh, to China and then joined Amazon Web Services, learn all about, you know, cloud computing, uh, yeah. which interestingly has a lot of, uh, uh, similarities to, to what, uh, internet computer is, is doing. Basically, you know, for, you know, uh, for, uh, for, for, you know, for all the audience there, you can consider ICP as a decentralized version of Amazon Web Services. So what I, what I learned about cloud computing, how to work with startup founders and even enterprise customers have a lot to do with what I'm doing now. <laughs> it's just at a much earlier stage. And I would argue what we're doing here in, you know, in Web3, in crypto or in internet computer is even more disruptive than you know the central cloud computing platform um but in a nutshell that's what brought me to uh definitive foundation it's uh i i really i i really like the technology even back in the days you know back, that was before they even published the white paper uh i think the first version of uh, icp white paper was published in 2018 um but at the time i was already very hooked, uh, very hooked to its mission to maybe its ambition and audacity, I was like, okay, this maybe there's a there's a chance, you know, they this team's gonna make it, and I want to be part of that. So that's that's how that's how I I join. Awesome, exciting. Uh, actually, I'm gonna like backtrack your history a bit, and maybe just begin with some other question before that. Uh, um, when I, did, I think you said you joined uh, GE as like management trainee. When you yeah. joined during that time, I don't know what year it was. was Jack Welch, Jack Welch was still the CEO. <laughs> that was. Jack. I have to ask. I yes, yes, it's uh, the the good old interesting days. Yes, when I joined General Electric, really? that was nineteen ninety nine. Oh wow! So, yeah, so that was during the time. Yeah. So I actually, actually, uh, so uh, at one point I was in Tokyo, right? Uh -huh. Both Jack Welch and Jeff Email were in Tokyo. Wow, and I was very, I was very fortunate. I was just a junior, you know, a junior management trainee at the time. But I was yes. lucky enough. I was, I, I joined, I, I went to this event. Basically, all the GE people in Tokyo show up. 
mm. basically to witness sort of the torch passing uh, this event. Yeah. You know, so and, and you know there was you know Jack Welch, Jack Welch, you know it's like he he's like a Moses walking on water, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then and then Jeff Email was on the other end was on was on the other side of the cl- the, the, the you know the crowd. You can you can just visualize you know the two of them they work together and then they shake hands. We were all there. Oh, okay, this is such a historical moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, <that's laughs> crazy. Mm. But that was before we obviously we didn't we didn't have the hindsight knowledge of what happened to G afterwards. But that was quite a different yeah. story. <laughs> I see. <laughs> interesting. In, I I I would say that yeah, you joined it at a very interesting time. I would say I mean Jack Wells now is probably regarded as one of the most influential mm-hmm. businessmen, right? In in the whole yes. like the business sphere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that was uh you know as a management trainee in GE, we were. Uh, we, you know, we, we really went all in in the whole management philosophy of GE and all that. And I think that, you know, not, not just uh, not just my friends and colleagues in GE, that whole philosophy from Jack Welch influenced the whole generation, the whole generation of executives. Um, but well, but what do we know? And uh, things change really quickly. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> you know, the whole. The whole dynamics. Uh, let's just. It's it's an understatement to say there has been there has been a bit of a change in GE, uh, but we didn't know at the time. I bet, yeah, for sure. I think it's really hard to see the future anyway, especially mm-hmm. like after the internet came. There's so many new things uh, pop yeah. up, and I think after you said you were working at like some startups, right? While you were at uh, yeah. Stanford or something. What were those companies about? Uh, I actually startups. work on. Uh, so I've had a. I've done this three times as a startup founder. The first mm. one I didn't mention was uh, was actually uh, when I was in Beijing. Mm. So uh, with two other friends, we created one of the one of the earliest um, developer studio to create apps, mobile apps. Okay. That was that was in two thousand ten. Okay. Two thousand ten. So, I see. So a few years that after was, the uh, iPhone, yeah. It was actually just uh, I think the iPhone came out what, in two thousand seven, and then yeah. App Store came out in two thousand nine. Yeah. So we formed our our little tiny startup in two thousand ten. So we were at the time uh, literally one of the one of the first and few, you know, developer studios trying to create this thing called a mobile applications <laughs> from mm. App Store. Um, so that was a uh, so we. We, we we raised funding. We released quite a few apps and uh, so on and so forth. So that was my first one, and then we sold that to uh, Zhenren, one of the major internet portals in China at the time. Hmm. And then I do two more when I was in Palo Alto. One was this animation. Again, uh, I, I've I've had a thing with the animation industry somehow. Uh, so the second one was uh, was this animation movie studio where we tried to create the Pixar. For Chinese, for the Chinese oh. audience, right? Okay. At the time, obviously, Pixar was was a huge success already. Yeah. Uh, with all these movies that we just couldn't get tired of, um, and then we figured that uh, we didn't have that in China, and China was China's market was booming. You know, people were going to the cinemas, and there are some good quality movies coming up, but no animation movies uh, that had that had the same quality as Pixar. So we wanted to do that. That was uh, again. That was more than ten years ago. Um, and then another another startup I did afterwards was this. Uh, it's really we don't we don't we don't have this term anymore, but it used to be called a fit tech, fit F I T fit technology. Fit tech. Okay. Uh, it's, fit tech is basically we we try to we try to collect people's uh, body that da- body data. Okay. So that uh, we can make recommendations. What clothes will fit your body well? Um, at the time, we didn't know that's called big da- big data, but but that's what that's basically big data. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it big was, data. Uh, we were we were doing without knowing, you know. There's a fancy word for that at the time, um, but we we try to create this a social network so that uh, people of similar body shapes and sizes, you know, they can share what they wear and then and then and then and then go for that. Yeah. I see. Yeah, and I, I think now we both know that. I mean, like the whole, I think, what is it, fitting industry or clothing, mm-hmm. there's now like, yeah, huge data. And I think many startups came out of that, I'm sure. Yeah. So I'm curious, yeah. what happened to those who, uh, the animation studio you tried to begin and then the. the animation, uh, we, uh, the animation uh, we didn't, didn't continue because we, uh, had, a, we, we, had a, we had a dispute among the founders. Hmm. So one of the founders has some uh, has some personal issues. So the venture that that had an impact on the, 
of the venture, so we couldn't continue, which was uh, quite a shame. That's we unfortunate. Were, it was uh, because the Chinese, you know, Chinese movie market was just was really uh, was was really really at the early stage of booming. Hmm. Um, and uh, you know, uh, I, th- I think last year a lot of us we saw this uh, hugely successful animation movie uh, uh, by by Wang Wei, the the co uh, the founder of another animation movie studio that started at the same time in 2012, 20, 20, 2013. It just it took that long. It took that long I see. for this whole industry to mature, for the audience to mature, to hmm. you know, to appreciate something like that. Uh, we were there really early, but 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 for uh, for some um, because of the funders' uh, issue, we couldn't continue. Um, and then for the for the, for the for the first one in Beijing, uh, we I had to start just because I I had to. Ch- I had to I had to change basically I had to change from Beijing to to America because of again some of the family family uh, family reasons uh, it's about it's about my residency in America I I had to you know I have to be I have to be back on on, on American soil oh, to okay. um, <laughs> to just so that I yeah. I can con- I can continue the green card uh, so that was um, that was a bit unfortunate. Um, and then, uh, my, my, my last one is a feed tech, uh, startup. Again, I had to wrap it up. We, we raised funding. We, we released two, uh, two applications. We have some early users, but I had to uh, wrap it up because again, uh, I wanted to change my sort of my domain from California to China. Okay. Uh, and that particular business model, at the time, will only work in America. It will not work in China. So oh, I, really? so I had to, I had, yeah. So I had Why? to. Uh, was it's there just, any reason? Uh, it was. I think. I think that. I think that business is is a social network. It's. Uh, hmm. It just appear. We at least we try to target the teenagers. You know, the fifteen to to 20, let's say early twenty youngsters okay. in America. Uh, hmm. There wasn't such a crowd yet in China at the time. I see that you know who who is willing to share and and all that. It's just uh, it's just very different. Um, but well, uh, but then but then on that you know, Xiao Hongshu did really well. <laughs> so uh, what do we know? <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, right. So but anyway, that was uh, the, the main reason is I uh, just my wife and I we figure we need to we need to shift our base back to Asia so that we can spend more time with our. With our with our uh, with our parents and all that, so so sometimes when uh, when that happens, we had to you know certain business is a little bit difficult to to shift the whole operation from America to China, uh, so that's that's what happened. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think so, uh, one thing I've learned about entrepreneurship is that I feel like there's also timing is also a factor, right? Yeah, timing. Like sometimes if you begin timing. the the business like way too ahead of time, like yeah. people in the market they don't understand, right? Exactly. Or they don't know. Exactly. Like, yeah. So timing I mean, is also... yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, Lam. I mean, that's mm. uh, I think timing is super important, and it's very difficult to time the market. Yeah, it's it's very very difficult. I would, you know, maybe maybe in my own to my own consolation, I would argue that uh, for the three times uh, where I was an entrepreneur, I was too early. Mm. Like I, I, it just happened that I was, you know, well, you know, for, for my first one when when we were making applica- uh, apps, yeah, that was ve- that was very early. Yeah, that's um, so sometimes I can't help thinking, what if, right? What if we we didn't stop, we continue? Uh, then you know maybe we could have you know uh, could have created a lot of other things um, to to fully leverage you know the the, the glory of the mobile internet. But yeah. we were we went there too early, and we sort of came out a little bit too early, to be honest. Uh, you know, I think the same can be said for my. For my second, uh, and especially the last one, you know, that was uh, when I when I uh, wrap up my my third uh, startup. That was the time that was this little startup that was just gaining momentum in both America and China. That is TikTok. Oh, TikTok that was basically huge. TikTok. <laughs> uh, now it's massive. Now it's ubiquitous yeah. everywhere. Yeah. But at the time, it was uh, it just got started. And, uh, you know, who would have thought, uh, you know, a social media application created by Chinese team would have, would have become so successful in America? No, I mean, that was, they certainly, they, they were, they were totally groundbreaking at the time. 
Yes. Right. Um, but then I was, uh, so what do I know? I was following the, the old playbook. Okay. If you are sort of, you want to do this, you have to be in America or you want to do that. You have to be in China. Um, I didn't, um, but then, you know, ha- have we continue just to, uh, uh, to march on, uh, maybe, you know, maybe we could have, uh, we could have ended up in a very different place, but this is very difficult to, it's very difficult to speculate the, the what if the history would have turned out. It's true. It's true. Because I mean, nobody has a crystal ball, right? Yeah. yeah. I feel like even with the timing, I feel like just a few years ahead of the time is probably it's okay, right? As, as in you build the product because it's going to take a few years, right? I mean, to build your product yeah. and then. By the time product is finished, if the market is already like ready for it, then I feel like yeah, the right timing. But of course, it's very hard to know the right timing, right? It's yeah. hard to know yeah. when when you need to get out. When you mm-hmm. need to, okay, yeah. this is this is this is too early to get out. It's, it's it's very difficult to make that decision. Yeah, it's true. It is really tricky. So okay, I see. So I think so. After your startup, you came to AWS, right? And you said you were supporting yeah. startups, right? And you yes. were working there. Were, were you working with like, were, was I working with any Web3 startups in back then at AWS? Well, actually we were, um, yes, a little bit. So hmm. I joined um, uh, Amazon Web Services in 2018. Hmm. We, so I was, uh, I was responsible for the startup division, which was a very important division in all AWS because, sure. uh, you, know, you know, AWS business basically yes. to provide cloud computing services and who yep. are the big who are the big users of those highly elastic computation resources internet startups yes. you know the the Airbnb, airbnbs you know the linkedin the the dropbox mm. the dd and all that right uh, and also there was a, so uh, so what, what uh, the the moment i joined the, um, uh, aws i noticed this segment was growing really fast that was crypto Mm. 20, remember, remember 2018. Oh yeah, 2018 yeah, yeah. crypto was I see going. Boom. <laughs> that was was booming, and uh, and apparently, uh, well, I mean, I can say this now. It's uh, it's 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 uh, it's sort of uh, it's widely known that uh, some of the largest crypto exchanges they use AWS. Yes, I think they they did. Yeah, yeah, and it's widely known that most of the largest. <laughs> Crypto exchanges are run by Chinese. Yes, I think. I mean, that, that one is well known now, actually. <laughs> yeah. So when I was at AWS, we witnessed all these exchanges, you know, from Binance to OK wow. to Gay, you know, how they grew from basically nobody to, yeah. to giants within the span of two to three years. Because they, bought, they, they, they needed to buy the machines from AWS. Yeah, because of the business nature, uh, naturally they they will have to go to AWS. AWS yes. uh, was was and still the dominant um, cloud pro, uh, cl- uh, cloud service provider. So so sort of we had a we had a front row seat <laughs> to witness the explosive growth of this thing called crypto exchanges, <laughs> and uh, and actually they they brought they 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 brought a lot of uh, solution architects from AWS. Hmm. I remember one of the, you know, some of the, some of the top guys, uh, from our essay, uh, essay organization, uh, went to join, uh, Binance and, and, and all that. So, uh, yeah, so that was, uh, actually quite an interesting time to, uh, you know, there was no such, I mean, there, there are not as many regulatory constraints at the time just yet. Okay. It was still sort of, uh, this is, this is, this whole thing is so new and, uh, you know, we just let it. Everyone just like okay, just you know, buy more machines, you know, turn on more servers. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> uh, very, uh, very interesting time. I see, I see. Okay, and and for well, re- regarding crypto web three, though, how how did you actually first learn about like uh, crypto web three? Did you just I don't know? Did you come across Bitcoin, Ethereum, or something in, in the past, or what was? Your oh yeah, I was. Uh, I think the first the first time I I, I ran into uh, you know I heard about Bitcoin. That was oh that was really uh, twenty uh, I think probably twenty eleven. Yeah, twenty eleven, twenty eleven, twenty twenty two. When I was in Beijing, when I was I still see. in Beijing, I was tr- I was trying to use. Com- uh, Obviously, everyone was trying to use computer to, to do the mining, yeah. uh, and uh, and I thought this is a, this idea was very very unique. You know, twenty one million supply and a money a digital a digital money with only 
with no with only consensus. That's all. Uh, so so I thought that was uh, that was really unique. Uh, but then when I uh, when when I went to Palo Alto, uh, around twenty seven, uh, I think I believe that was around. 2016, 2015, 2016, when I heard about smart contract for the first time. Hmm. I think that was the early days of Ethereum. Very early um, days, yeah. So one of my Stanford classmates, uh, he's still with me now. He's still in Shanghai. So he just moved his whole family to Shanghai. So oh, nice. I have the, I can tell him that, do you know that you were the one, you were the person that told, that told me for the first time that there is this notion called smart contract. I, I had no clue. I had no clue at the time. What it, but it just, it just sounds, it just sounds really cool. Yeah. Smart contract. Okay. Running on blockchain. Um, and then, uh, and then when, when we went, when we entered 2017, a lot of friends around me were, you know, were, do, were basically into a uh, crypto, crypto industry, either do either mining or, uh, just busy writing, uh, writing up their white papers. So that was, uh, you know, that was, you know, that was the season of white papers of all the, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> a lot of white papers, ICO, white paper. <laughs> white yeah. ICOs and white papers, right? Yeah. Uh, or not. Uh, sometimes, so my, uh, I, I, I joke with my co-founder at the time that maybe we, you know, if we just, you know, look around what's going on with us, uh, if we just pay a little bit more attention to, to the fast changing world around us. Yeah. Maybe we should just, you know, put aside our our little startup and then just <laughs> just write up a white paper and then we'll be done with this, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right but, uh, but again, what do we know? <laughs> it's true, you know. Now yeah. people say that as a founder, you need to stay focused. Okay, so we were we were very focused <laughs> in our in our own tiny world, you know, try to try to soft launch uh, our applications, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then at the same time. There was this huge wave, this technology wave that was coming, that was coming, coming, coming from, from our side. And we saw that, we saw that coming, but it just, we didn't, uh, we didn't do, uh, I didn't do too much about it at the time. Um, hmm. uh, maybe I should have, um, but, uh, but it took me a couple of, couple of more years, you know, in AWS to finally get back to the main mission. That is Web3, that is blockchain. I see. Yeah, I mean, I think we all can say that high side is like very easy, right? High side twenty twenty. But yeah, I think at that time it's very. I think if you you, you kind of have to take a leap of faith, right? Because you didn't know whether it, 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 exactly yeah, you didn't know you whether really this thing is going to survive. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it's super tricky. But anyway, yeah, it sounds like you're super early. You've been around for a long time. And then, yeah, so I think, okay, well, I think now is a, without further, I think probably right time to talk about, you know, your main um, company, the D Definity Foundation. So I think maybe a good idea to maybe share a bit about the, um, the how the, the company was founded, how the company or the foundation was founded, maybe the... Sure. Hmm, so, uh, so foundation, so Definity Foundation was founded uh, in uh, Zurich, uh, in Zurich, Switzerland in 2016. Yeah. It's one of the earliest foundations uh, in this industry. Um, I think the Ethereum Foundation was founded a year earlier. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, why, why foundation? I mean, we can we can we can explain that. But basically, this is a norm in crypt in the blockchain industry. Like all yes. the all the major layer one or even layer two uh, blockchains, they usually have headquarters in in in, the, in Switzerland, and most of them have a foundation, and it's a non profit foundation. So we have no yes. revenue. Right. So that's a, that's an industry norm. And the Definitive Foundation is the primary developer behind ICP. So the way we say that is because we, yeah, it's a, so ICP Internet Computer Protocol, this layer one blockchain is our baby. We spend five years to, you know, to, to, to build a, to build a mainnet, to develop the technology. And we recruited some of the best cryptographers and researcher in the world. Uh, a lot of them in America and, and Switzerland to work on this. Uh, you know, some of the most famous scientists such as um, Ben Lin, uh, he, you know, if you guys are familiar with BLS uh, algorithm that is widely uh, used in the blockchain. So he, Ben Lin, he is the L in the BLS. Um, and um, and, uh, and uh, Timo, Timo who, uh, who wrote our, uh, who wrote our uh, first version of the white paper, uh, and also Andreas uh, Roseberg, who is the co-creator of WebAssembly, WhatsApp. 
so these are the you know just to give you some idea these are the early uh, researchers this, uh, of definitive foundation it's really an all-star team yeah. um and we spent five years to uh, to build that, to uh, to build to build the mainnet, and so that's how you do this. You 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 have a white paper, you have a vision. Yeah. We raise a lot of funding. We we went through five rounds of funding, raising uh, money from a lot of uh, Asian uh, developers such as uh, Wan Xiang, Hashkey, Fenbushi, SNZ, uh, Ami Capital, and then uh, and then there will be uh, uh, Antonin Horowitz and uh, Polychain, Electric Capital, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So basically, uh, basically, uh, yeah, we were, uh, and also uh, Amino Capital uh, in the based in uh, uh, Palo Alto. I see. So, how, how much money was fund uh, was raised, by the way? Just, I'm just curious. Uh, I remember roughly. close to three, close to three hundred million dollars. Okay. Yeah. So before we launched the main, I mean, I, I mean, obviously now you know that record has been broken many times uh, yeah. in the last couple of years. <laughs> For sure. But yeah. at a, at the time, that was pretty. That was that was that was a record. I think it's quite uh, high. That yeah. was, that was, that was very high. Um, and then, uh, and then we launched the mainnet, um, in, in May 2021. That's called an Internet Computer Protocol, ICP. So, uh, going back to the question we talked about earlier. So these two things, they are slightly different, Definity and ICP. Because ICP, well, number one, ICP is a network. So, so that part, I think, mean, that's easily understandable, you know, similar yeah. to Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. Yes. Uh, you know, Polkadot and you have ICP. It's a layer one blockchain that grows every second, like a big yes. Python and it, it kind mm. of grows, right? And number two, it's a technology because internet computer protocol. So it's a protocol. It's a, it's open source. It's out there on GitHub. So, uh, it constitutes uh, a vast library of, of, of open source technology. So that's number two. And then number three, ICP is an ecosystem. When we talk about ICP, right, we, we really talk about, okay, this is a, it's a, it's an ecosystem of ICP. It's, we, we refer to developers, mostly developers who use ICP technology to create Web3 applications. And that's our, uh, that's our universe. That's our ecosystem. You know, in the same, in the same, uh, in the same, in the, uh, you know, similar to when we talk about the AWS ecosystem, you know, yeah. that refers to all the founders or, or startups that use AWS as a, as a vendor for the cloud computing resources. And then Definity, but Definity is an organization. Definity is a foundation. Definity is a, a company or is a nonprofit foundation. Yeah. Uh, we are the, like, I'm the employee of, of the of the Definity Foundation, um, so there's okay, so there's nothing that, that there's no notion of. I'm like, oh, Hilbert, you, you are the so you are the head of ICP of Asia. No, 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 I'm not. See, I'm not the head of hmm. ICP in Asia. I'm just a uh, you know I'm just the guy you know uh, in in Definity you know that helps that work with a lot of uh, developer studios and investors to grow the developer ecosystem for ICP in Asia. Because ICP, this notion belongs to the community. Yeah. And then that's the, that's the difference I'm trying to explain. It, it belongs to the, you know, to every developer mm. or every user that is, uh, you know, that uses that, uh, that is, that is beneficiary or a user of the technology. Uh, but we, among all that, um, Definitive Foundation is just, is just one team. And we are, we are a team of about uh, 250 people globally. It's a small team, you know, by, by measure of traditional web two, uh, uh, technology companies. Um, but we are, uh, we are, uh, we think we are, we are pretty good at what we do, which is uh, research, which is R and D, which is research and developing, uh, really cutting edge web three technologies. Um, but when, it th when we talk about ICP, we, you know, we rely on developers from the community developers. Uh, from maybe a lot of developers joining from other ecosystems like Ethereum, you know, yeah. to help grow the ecosystem. So that's a that's a relation and also the difference. Yeah, I think that totally makes sense. Yeah, thank thank you for the very easy to uh, understand explanation. Yeah, I'm actually I've been I've been in Web three quite quite a long time now, so I'm I'm also familiar with the foundation of like you have a foundation that kind of support a lot of the activity, but then you have the, yeah. the blockchain, right? Or like, you yeah. know, in your case, internet computer, which is like, and then belong to uh, everyone, I guess, or people who use it, whether it's user, yes. developer, 
it's yes. typically decentralized with a token yep. or with some other governance mechanism, right? Yeah, yes. So I think that's a typical structure that I've also uh, seen a few. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I think it'd be maybe a good idea. If, if, um, feel free to maybe uh, walk through a simple introduction about internet computers. Oh, okay. internet computer. Have, yeah. I can, I can, I can actually maybe idea. maybe use a, a one pager to sure. explain that. I think that would yeah. be. I think that'd be helpful. Be, yeah. That'll be that'll be easier uh, for the audience. Let me yes. try this. It's coming up. Okay. Yes, I can see. It. Yeah. I can see. Do I need to do full screen? Does it doesn't matter or does it? Okay. Anyway, so That's this fine. is a you know this is a very simple one pager to explain uh, what is internet computer. Sometimes we call it IC or even ICP. I think I think we can we can use the the two terms inter interchangeably. All right, but ICP is uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's a decentralized version of Amazon Web Services. Um, is also a, a layer one blockchain, one of the largest in the world. And um, it's a combination of, uh, it's a collection of many independent distributed data centers around the world, which form a, a giant virtual machine. So that is internet computer. Um, so on this, on this chart, on this graph, you can see the, the different layers of, of the ICP. Uh, at, the, at the most bottom layer, this is the, these are the, data centers, the IDCs around the world. And right now we have more than, I think we have more than 100, we have more than 500 uh, nodes. Sometimes we call them nodes. Uh, we have more than 500 around the world uh, operated by, by more than 50 different node operators. So these node operators, they are like the IDCs, uh, independent data centers. They provide the machines that will provide the computation power, the bandwidth, and also data storage um, for the smart contracts running on ICP. That is a, so that is a, a, the, the bottom layer. And then at the, at the top, you have all the users, all the smart contracts. Um, and then in between, you know, this is the whole abstraction layer. That's what we call Internet Computer Protocol. It has, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of very advanced cryptography technology that goes into this middle abstraction layer. We call that a chain fusion technology. Um, without going to too detail, but basically we use, we use a software to decentralize the software, decentralized cryptography technology to achieve consensus, to achieve security that would be extremely difficult and also costly to achieve on the traditional centralized platform, such as AWS, yeah. you know, because uh, obviously AWS, uh, the centralized platform such as AWS or Google or Microsoft Azure, they can this you know they provide the world we are living right now mostly, um, you know all the applications, all the websites, and all that. Um, but uh, and also the performance seems to be pretty pretty solid um, for the most part. But uh, the problem with this. Uh, structure is is uh, this is a centralization, is that a data ownership, hmm. is that uh you know uh, when when a technology stack is a centralized platform, then there is always a uh, vulnerable spot that can be compromised, always, and it's very easy. It's you know for um, and we have seen many many uh, many. Uh, Cases like that, uh, scams or, or hacks, you know, that compromise the traditional uh, cloud platform. So, but we want to change that in Definity and ICP. So that's uh, first and foremost, the chain fusion technology that um, uses the most advanced form of cryptography to make sure the data is secure. Um, and then we have uh, I, I should talk about the third one, probably more, uh, more easier for the audience. So we have a very special type of smart contract called a canister. And canister is, you, you can consider that as a live version of a Docker, like a virtual, okay. you know, like a virtual machine, like a, yeah. like a you know, like, um, from, um, like an EC2 from AWS. Yeah. Um, it has, uh, it has right now, it has four, it has more than 400 gigabyte of stable memory. So in the canister, literally, um, like you know, like a canister, you can you can store you can store a lot of things in this yeah. smart contract canister. It can be a website, 
you can mm. be your personal blog website. You know, it can be a, you know, the lam, you know, lamtun dot x y z website. Um, you can, it can, uh, it can be a, it can be a database. It can be a SaaS uh, service as a, as a platform. It can be a game. You, you can play a uh, Pokemon on on a canister. It can be a e commerce website. So it can be. It can be whatever as a as a developer you want you want this to uh, to to be. Uh, so the the canister is very powerful, and I would argue that uh, even you know uh, in ICP even without a token, without the ICP as a token, uh, this canister can still be uh, it's still quite a game changer for a lot of developers. Um, so that's uh, so that's that, and then we have this uh, reverse gas fee model that is entirely different from Ethereum. So Ethereum, we all know there's, there's gas fees. So when a lot of users try to get the same, say, NFT or airdrop at the same time, it creates massive network congestion that raises the gas fee substantially. It's good and bad. But the bad thing, the, the bad thing is this is, has become a major showstopper for Ethereum and, you know, by and large, crypto industry to achieve mass adoption. Because normal hmm. users, they have, oh, so are you telling me that uh, I just pay, you know, $100 for this NFT? Now I have to pay another $10 just for the gas. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is not very intuitive for the yeah. traditional web users. In ICP, no, we, well, you know, while well, a lot of our peers, oh, we have reduced the gas fee substantially, blah, blah, blah. blah. Our approach is no, we do not have gas fee at all. We don't. We, so we, because we go with this reverse gas fee model. Hmm. So that's a, that's a major philosophical uh, shift from the Ethereum world, because basically we believe that, uh, you know, the burden of, 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 this, of keeping a website going, it should, be, it should be born by the developers. It should be born by the founders. It should not be born by the users. But the Ethereum approach is, okay, that burden will be passed to the users, actually to the next users. So, so it's good and bad. So for Ethereum, it's, it's with, 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 with this uh, sort of uh, um, um, uh, architecture, it's very, it's, very, it's very cost efficient for the developer to deploy a smart contract. And then that's it. It's on, it's on chain. You pay, you pay the gas fee one time and then that's it. Um, but then for all the subsequent users who need to use this smart contract, they have to pay fees. Um, but, uh, you know, for ICP, we, we want to keep the original, the, the original internet the way it is. Um, so that's what we are playing a very long game by, by doing that. Interesting. Yeah. So basically they, they, they still like gas fee, right? But it's just, uh, like, is, is it being like sponsored we have... or subsidized? No, actually, no. no, we have no gas fee. Oh, no gas fee. Okay. So, so unlike other networks, obviously we have a lot of peers, other, you know, competing layer one networks. Basically, hmm. the, their way of resolving this gas fee problem is to subsidize that. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. That, but uh, but then, where does the money come from? The money come from the come from the VC funds. Where do they you know where do they get the money from? From the LPs. But eventually, uh, you know, personally, I don't think the money uh, this kind of game can be played um, uh, can be played uh, perpetually. The music has to stop at some point. But in ICP, we do not have the notion of gas fee at all. We only have this transaction fee. And hmm. uh, that transaction fee is 0 0.00030 ICP, uh, uh, one ICP. So the only reason for this uh, non-zero transaction fee is to prevent DDoS attack. Other than that, there's no gas fee. It's zero. So it's quite different. I see. Um, you know, which makes uh, our technology or all the applications built on ICP, you know, quite easy for the traditional web users to use. It's a, it's the same concept for them. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. So then, uh, who who pays for that transaction fee? Is it, is it user or the no? Because you said they they is a uh, the, transaction the fee. The user, yeah, the users will uh, the users uh, the, the actually the uh, so if I need to uh, say so if I need to transfer some money to you, uh, Lam, you know, I will yeah. um, I will be paying. I will, so the the one initiating the trans tra the initiating the transaction will be paying that fee. But but for you, you don't you don't need to, you don't need to do anything. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah. I think that's how it usually works. Right? You need to yeah, pay the fee how, for, the, for the notes. Works. That's hmm. right. That's right.
Okay. Um, so another another major, I would say, major innovation that uh, ICP brings to the industry is the second one. Um, but it's quite it's a uh, it's called an NNS uh, network nervous system. It's not easy to understand though. Um, but this is basically it is basically a DAO system, uh, a, a, ton, um, uh, a decentralized autonomous organization that uh, that is available to all the um, uh, ICP applications. Um, what you can do with NNS is 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 quite interesting. You can uh, you can basically decouple decouple funders from the application. Oh, hmm. another word. In another word, as a founder, say you know, Lam, you have created a website. You can transfer the controllership, the the ownership of your website, to your community. So what that means is you you no longer you can no longer have root access to your own website. Whatever changes you want to make to your website, you have to submit a proposal to the community. It's a DAO. Uh, and then uh, only when this proposal is passed by the community, then the code change that you propose can take effect. Okay. Makes sense. That yeah, sounds very... quite that sounds quite troublesome. So one might wonder, you know, why would you why would you want to do that? Well, we think this is the ultimate form of decentralization. You know, without doing this, um, you know, with all these thousands of millions of Web3 applications, you will find that somebody always has the private key. Somebody always has the root access control that can basically wipe out all the user data. Or that can, you know, work, uh, run away with all the user data, all the money. Um, but the only way to uh, we, we think to prevent this from happening once and for all is to decouple the funders and then your own creations and really delegating that power to the community from a technical standpoint. Um, so that is a very powerful, uh, a very powerful technology, not for the faint hearted, but uh, so far more than I think about 26 Startups in uh, uh, in our ICP ecosystem have adopted this uh, uh, a form of this NNS to uh, tokenize and also decentralize uh, their applications, um, and 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 this can this can bring some really you know unprecedented use case scenarios that we have never seen in the last thirty year history of internet. Hmm. Interesting. So it's like a way to uh, help uh, decentralize, right? Help startups and to decentralize. protocol yes. decentralize. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And last but not the least, it's, uh, it's called an internet identity. So this is our, our DID system, the digital ID system for ICP. Again, this is very, very, very different from, you know, what people are already familiar with Ethereum, which is a MetaMask or the browser-based uh, extensions. We don't, we don't do that. So this internet identity is is like an anchor. It's a it's a, it's an anchor. You can you can go apply. Anyone can go apply for free for um, and you can you can you can you can you can create how many you want. Uh, uh, there's no there's no quota. There's no limit. Um, but what it does very beautifully is to is to is to is to create two layers. One layer is is you, Lam. So you have your internet identity anchor called the anchor. Yeah, and then uh, once you have this number one, um, once you have this anchor, you can use all the ICP applications. Okay, that's that, that's that's simple. But then the second part is is more interesting. Let's say you are using uh, the same Internet Identity Anchor with ten applications from ICP. You will have a unique principal ID with all these ten different applications. Which means they don't know who you are, even though it's the same. It's a, you are using the same internet identity, but they can even if these ten, you know, ten applications, if they sit down together, they say, "Okay, we want to figure out who is who is Lam." Yeah. they won't be able to backtrack to you. They won't hmm. because there's uh, there's two two layer of um, of identity separation. If you think about that, that's a major problem of the current internet, right? We we are we are so used to uh, using uh, Gmail or uh, Meta uh, to uh, to authenticate ourselves on the platform, yeah. 
or in the in the case of China, use you know WeChat and 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 and, and Alipay yeah. as a de facto way of uh, authentication. What that brings is they they know everything about us. Everything. Yes. Because basically, there's the, all the data. Oh, okay, Herbert. Okay, Herbert just ordered another helmet. You know, so let's push him more advertisement of uh, of, of of bicycle helmet. Yeah. <laughs> all right. There's there's no privacy. There's no whatsoever. Um, and it's the same issue in the world of MetaMask and all that because it's a uh, there's it's 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 just uh, it's very open. It's uh, it's just out there. It's uh, there's no there's no privacy. But uh, the idea of internet, comp- uh, internet identity created a separation. Um, so it's uh, so we think this is a this is a very this is a very easy way for users to uh, to actually use Web three. Um, and also another another uh, feature is you don't need to memorize uh, any uh, uh, any uh, uh, private key. Um, so obviously, it's another another major major hindrance you know for uh, for crypto industry for mass yeah. adoption because you have to manage your private key um or you just have to trust a centralized um, exchange which is which i'm not sure which one is a you know is a, is a lesser <laughs> evil yeah. um but uh, both are pretty hard um but with with internet identity you don't have to worry about all the hassles all you ha- all you need is you know your your phone your iphone your face id or you have a UB key like a like a uh, like a typical uh, key hardware device, yeah. like a hardware device. Yes. Yeah. So this is at a few uh, at a very high level uh, the main fe- the main features from ICP. What makes ICP a very different, a very unique layer one blockchain? Um, and I should also mention just on the right, it's it's, a, it's really you know um, you know apart from all the te- uh, from all the technical um, uh, part of the, uh, the, uh, the the features, ICP is asynchronous. So that is very different from Ethereum, right? Yeah. It's asynchronous. That means uh, any smart contract can talk to another smart contract, can talk to many different smart contracts at the same time, and then process all the mess- messages uh, um, uh, together. We don't, we don't have to wait, like Ethereum, we don't have to wait for all the nodes to achieve the same state. The Ethereum way of doing things is good for financial transaction, but it's impossible to scale. It's impossible mm. to scale at the, you know, the conventional internet, uh, internet speed. Um, the only way to go is really asynchronous uh, communication. So that's, that's what we have, uh, with ICP. Uh, and because of that, we were, a- we are able to, uh, to scale horizontally. Uh, we call that subnets. So right now we have more than uh, I think we have 37 subnets globally. So each subnet is actually one blockchain. So when the, when this particular blockchain, the capacity, you know, the smart contract is full, the network will just spin up another subnet, and then we 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 we, we go on. We uh, the the entire network will just keep going like that. Um, while Ethereum is only is only one blockchain. Mm. So there's a there's a limit, you know, how, um, how, how, how much it can scale. That's why it has to rely on a lot of uh, layer twos or even layer threes. No. Um, so, that's a, so that's a second uh, the major difference. Interesting. The it, th- it, it sounds similar to like the auto uh, scaling, right, on AWS, right? When you run out of yeah, the, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. EC2, exactly. I mean, you spin up in, a new in, one, yeah. in the case of, let's say, AWS, if you run out of all the regions, you know, AWS would just create another another new region, let's say in yeah. South Africa or in Argentina. Um, but then the difference is number three. In the case of AWS, when AWS create a commission a new region, obviously AWS has hundred percent ownership of that. Right. Yeah. That's uh, so that's because it's very well, it's very centralized. Um, and no, and really nobody else can afford this kind of uh, capital in, uh, in yeah. capital investment. It's very expensive. But the, it's very expensive. But in the case of ICP, in Divinity Foundation, we don't run we don't run those nodes. So all these nodes that I that I mentioned, more than five hundred of them around the world, they are run and operated by independent data centers. So that's you know that's a decentralization part. And we have the we have this called a uh, Nakamoto coefficient to make sure that in the same subnet, 
there will be no concentration of of, of any of any particular no op- uh, operators. Um, for example, if and, and also another, so there's there are many different dimensions to make sure this is as dispersed, as distributed as possible. Um, so that's uh, uh, when, when we say when we say that ICP is similar to a decentralized version of AWS. You know, this is the biggest part. We do not run or own the data centers that power the smart contracts on ICP. They are they are managed by all the diff, all different all, all kinds of different uh, 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 IDC companies. But why would they want to do that? Because well, they are incentivized. We provide them with good, with reasonable economic incentives to pro to provision their machines for ICP smart contracts, and they feel that uh, you know this is a uh, uh, there's good return on the money, and they are willing to do that. Um, and the last one is the, in terms of the difference is we are able to run the front end of web services. And I mentioned that, uh, for example, uh, Lamb, you have uh, your website. Yeah. You know, I would imagine now you are hosting the website on, on some sort of I don't know Digital Ocean or maybe AWS or right one of the hosting companies. Yeah, one of the cloud services. Yeah. One of the cloud services, right? Uh, that mm-hmm. ch- that that charge you a monthly fee uh, of of some sort. You know that you can you can also just do this on a canister smart contract on ICP. Mm, so really? you can uh, and with uh, yeah. Um, for example, I I actually I can I can sh- maybe I can show you uh, an example. Sure. Yeah, that'll uh, be great. Right now, I have my let me just let me start. I okay. I can. Let's see, let's see. For example, my own my own blog, my own website. Let me see if I can share that. So you host your own blog on ICP? Yes. Very good what you say. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, you see this uh, Herbert Young, right? This is my own website. Oh nice. My own blog, blah blah blah. I, I'm still in the process of migrating my previous blog website to this canister. Um but uh you know, see it's uh you know you you can leave comment. You can let me see. I have all this, da, 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 all the things I've been reading. My cookbook. Da, 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 oh, da. nice! Oh, yummy! <laughs> 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 yummy! Oh uh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did not expect to see food today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's getting late. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, you yeah, know all the photo, all the photo album. Nice. Uh, you know here and there. Da, 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 da. You see. Okay. By the way, so so Lam, this entire all the pictures and all this. Articles you see, they yeah. are hosted on one canister. Okay. On one canister. So this is, uh, yeah. So this is pretty. And, you know, and, I think this is pretty. And you, you said know, pretty it's like 400, 400 gigabytes, right? Is that like memory? Gigabyte. So basically, you can put like sta- a stable yeah. memory. I see. So yeah, you can probably save a lot of videos or images on there. Right? I mean, font eventually, font, yeah, big, eventually, yeah. We, uh, Definitive Foundation, uh, our R and D's roadmap is to expand that stable memory. To uh, one terabyte, and wow. and then just keep keep going. So yeah, at that at that point, you know, you can you can totally build your own music library or movie library, whatever multimedia library uh, in a single canister. Interesting. And is it free for user to just I don't know, run canister? It's or? not free. Obviously, not it free. shouldn't be free. Well, you know, yeah. it shouldn't be free. So Makes it's, sense, uh, yeah. so the, this is a so this is a key part of why we why we do this at all. Um, so uh, uh, we we have cycles. Cycles is a measure, is a measure uh, in ICP to to measure how much computation resources your smart contract has consumed. You know, in the same way, uh, yeah. you, you probably you probably have to pay a monthly fee to AWS. Oh yeah, because how, how right. much you use, right? The yeah, co- how many you use, use the, it? Yeah. the bandwidth, your you know the the, the hard yeah. disk and all that, right? Yep, yep. So in ICP, when you say you are a developer, you um. You you deploy a smart contract on um, on one of the subnets. Um, that this smart contract, you know, you know, in, in my case, is my personal website yeah. um, that has I don't know probably one hundred megabyte in terms of data for now. I have okay. a lot of JPEG JPEG images. Yeah. Um, so I have to pay cycles. I need to pay cycles to make sure this smart contract is is powered and power on 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 ICP. Hmm. Where do I get cycles? I buy ICPs, and I convert I ICPs into cycles. So that's how I got cycles. So you see, this is how the flying wheel is spinning. This is uh, this this explains why do we want to do this at all? 
right? Because we 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 are a nonprofit foundation. We have we have no revenue. Where do we get the money? Well, we we are the we are we are a very large holder of ICP tokens. Hmm. So, if we can do a good job at growing our ecosystem, that means we will be able to convince and and attract and recruit developers to join our ecosystem. Right. And all these developers, they will become entrepreneurs, you know, as you know, as that's why we yeah. that's why, you know, what, what, you know, that's what brings, you know, you and I, you know, on this podcast tonight, we want to we want to inspire or give some share some uh, uh, share some tips for the aspiring uh, entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs. They create applications. Applications bring users when when say if my website has a lot of uh Hits have a lot of views. That's going to consume yeah. even more computation resources. That means I, as a developer, I need to buy more cycles, which means I need to buy more ICPs. If more people are buying ICP, yeah. ICP's price is, go- is going up. It's going up, mm, and yes. then that'll be that, that'll be good for all of us. Yeah. So that's how the flying wheel, um, you know, uh, is eventually will complete the whole loop. Um, so it is. So, so this is a long. This is a this is a very long one uh, answer to your question. No, it's not free. Uh, it shouldn't be free, right? You know, if you know now we are, you know, in the internet now we know if anything, if something is free, that means you are the product. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, you're the product. Why right? Gmail is free? <laughs> yeah, true. because they are scanning our emails. Yeah. All uh, right. So, uh, yeah. we, we, then, we, then we are the product. Uh, we don't want that uh, in the world of ICP. So no, it's not free, but it's fairly, it's fairly cheap actually. You know, as someone mm. who has built, who, who I have been building website for the last I don't know fifteen years, and I've probably yeah. used every blogging platform there there has been. You know, from MySpace to yeah. MySpace Blogger dot com and then <laughs> what have you. <laughs> you know, all the all the ancient ancient technology platforms. Um, and also including, uh, including, uh, obviously, uh, EC2 from AWS. In my experience, yeah. and also from many developers, uh, in the ICP ecosystem that we work with, it's a lot cheaper to do the same thing on ICP. It's a lot cheaper because we don't, we, we actually don't, we don't charge for query calls. Well, it's, uh, and it's, so, so with all the, with all the, uh, if you go to the SDKs of, if you build a smart contract of ICP, there are two types of API calls, update and query. Update is if you change the state, right? Let's say we play a international chess game um, on a smart contract with yeah. every move that changes a state of something, of a variable, right? Yeah. Um, so if you, so for that, that, uh, so all the, all the update calls, they need to consume cycles. But on the other hand, most of the websites, the majority of APIs are just query calls. Where I'll say, I want to, I want to know what is the, uh, what is the price of gold or Dow Jones, you know, at this hour. I just need to fetch a, a data and then know the number. That's all. No, no number is changed in this process. It's called a query call. So right now, all the query calls on ICPs are free. So it's actually quite a, Quite a substantial cost advantage for developers to build the same applications. You know, it could be a it could be a WeChat, could be a little red book, could be an Instagram, could be a website hmm. uh, with the same features and functionalities, but uh, there's no charge for uh, for query calls. I see. No, oh, makes sense. Interesting. Actually, I'm quite curious. Maybe can you share some of the applications that are being built on ICP right now? Now, now oh, that yeah, I'm curious. Of I mean, of besides course. website, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So now yeah. let me uh, let me let me go let me go back to this. Sure. Okay. So just now we talk about uh, this, this, and uh, we can we can talk about uh, but this uh, mm. some interesting applications coming out of the ICP ecosystems. Yeah. So just now I mentioned that you know one key feature is we are able to run front end from within the smart contract, right? Yeah. And uh, for example, there is Mora. Um, just go to mora.app. Mora is uh, is a uh, sort of like a stuff stack or medium on ICP. Mm, so I it ena- enables content creators to write uh, to create newsletters, you know, to uh, to in- to to build your subscriber base with with your own canister. 
that's very powerful. It's very popular in ICP, such as uh, another one is the DAX. It's called ICP EX. It's one of the, there are, there are six or seven decentralized exchanges emerging okay. from ICP ecosystem. So this is one of them. They use, uh, they use a, a proactive market maker mechanism. And the front end and, and the back end are 100% running on ICP. Um, another one is Yuku application. This is a uh, Yuku uh, app. This is the largest NFT marketplace and also a metaverse on the uh, uh, on the internet computer. So uh, and also nice. uh, and the other one is this IC one two three X Y Z. This is a website that our Asia team has created to just to uh, to service the Chinese developers. Um, so I can yeah. So basically, all the you know all the websites. Um, all the all the static uh, websites, even uh, even dynamic websites, you can easily just migrate them to ICP. Um, and even some games like Yuku, you know, as a, as a metaverse is essentially uh, a, a, a a new game world that run that is running entirely on ICP. Nice, I see. Ah, oh, interesting. Yeah, That's quite a lot of interesting. Yeah. Application oh, online. Oh, oh, let me let me go to the okay. So the, so that the other one is cross chain. So um, ICP just now I talk about this uh, very uh, you know very vague concept called a chain uh, chain fusion technology. Yeah, I d I didn't really go go too deep into that, but to just know that it's uh, th this is what it is actually. Uh, we uh, we launched this feature called a threshold ECDSA. ECDSA this is a famous algorithm used in okay. uh, yeah. widely used in the in the blockchain uh, to uh, to for, for for forming consensus. So what it does is it will allow us to have this direct integration with Bitcoin. And wow. why we call that direct integration, we are not relying on any uh, third parties. Like right now in the industry, like all the, all the, all the, we, we have, we have a probably a few hundred layer twos on, on Bitcoin and all that. And most of them, they need to have a rep coin. Uh, uh, they rely on some uh, some kind of bridge, a centralized bridge, to uh, connect to Bitcoin. Um, but we don't we don't need that. Uh, so on ICP, you can you can use the smart contract on ICP to uh, initiate a transaction on the Bitcoin mainnet, uh, and that signature will be recognized, will be will be verified by Bitcoin. So essentially, we are giving smart contract capability to Bitcoin. Oh, I see. Interesting. So actually, reading on your website here earlier, actually, it says that like ICP as a Bitcoin layer two. Or like yes. A way, yes. Right? Yeah. That's hmm. right. That's what this guy is. A CK BTC. So CK stands for chain key technology. So we have a lot of CK uh, coins now in ICP uh, with you know B uh, Bitcoin for Ethereum, even some mean coins like CK Doge and PayPay and and also stable coin. Hmm. Um, so this uh, this uh, this is a very is a fast growing sector in ICP. That's very exciting because if you do transactions, let's say on CKBTC, it's much faster and much cheaper. That's the reason why you know when we encourage users or even Bitcoin OGs and whales to uh, to take a look at a CKBTC. I mean, I mean BTC is great. You know, we all love Bitcoin and all that, but it's it's slow. It's slow yeah. and the transaction is getting expensive. Yeah. With, with all the ordinals and ruins and, and all that. Yeah. Um, but a CKPTC, it's uh, uh, because basically, you know, the whole idea is eventually you can, you can simply control your own canister and your canister will control a wallet on Bitcoin or, uh, you know, another wallet on uh, Ethereum. So instead of doing transaction directly, on the mainnet of Bitcoin or Ethereum, all you have to do is do a transaction of swapping these two canisters on ICP. And ICP runs much faster than any other blockchain. We produce like 35, uh, no, 45 blocks per second. And wow. we can finalize transaction within 100 to 200 milliseconds. So Very fast. Yeah. Very fast, very cheap. You know, there's no again, there's no there's no gas fee. So, uh, uh, which makes ICP a very good vehicle, or you can consider that as a as a as a platform for uh, all the middleware 
for to, to build cross chain uh, applications. For example, uh, Omniti. Omniti uh, is uh, used to be part of a uh, uh, octopus network uh, that you know that had this uh, that has this token that is uh, very a very big uh, I think very big validator in the near uh, also Polkadot po uh, Polkadot ecosystem. Now the team has has discovered ICP and they they went all in on ICP and created hmm. this Omniti to uh, you know to sort of like a like a wormhole. But for all the blockchains, by using the ICP canister uh, to build a light client to achieve that to achieve that bridgeless to achieve that bridgeless uh, sort of a tra uh, uh, like a traffic police. I mean, the the, the difficult thing with all the okay. question is you always rely right now you always rely on a centralized bridge that is control as some sometimes always controlled by human at some point All right but with yeah. uh, what omniti discover is with icp you you don't you don't they, in, this entire process is governed by cryptography there's no human involvement and that is very powerful nice that's uh because you know we we, we try to be, be be as as decentralized as possible at every single step of the way um, and this this makes ICP a very potent technology platform for cross chain uh, developers. So that could be quite interesting. And then another one is HTTP outcalls, right? So in our industry, Oracle is a major part of the industry because uh, though the in, yeah. in the world of EVM or the Solidity smart contracts, they cannot touch to the traditional websites. They cannot fetch data from traditional websites. So we, they rely on oracles, and um, and that you know that gives the rise of chain key and all that. Um, but uh, I mean I'm chain link, chain link. But what is the problem with oracle? Yeah, oracle chain can be yeah. chain link, but oracles can be expensive, and oracles can also be very centralized. But with ICP, because our our smart our smart contract from the get go can can visit any website, you know, with no with no problem, you know, as my as I show you just now, my 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 own uh, uh, my own personal website is just it looks and behaves just like an, any other normal website, and I can create links. I can go from one website to another. There's no restriction, so we call this HTTP out course. So yeah, in the you know very hand very uh, handily, we we don't need oracles if you're a developer in ICT. You don't need to rely on oracles. You don't need to pay for oracles. You don't. You don't need to figure out oh which oracle should I use. This one is more accurate than the other, but it's more expensive. You don't, there's no hassle of of all that. Um, so there's a uh, interesting. Uh, again, so, know, basically, Z, so basically, you, you can interact with like data from web to website, right? You don't need like from any oracle, website. You know, from any website. Yeah, any website. Hmm. From any sense. website, for example, you can uh, um, so Lam. You know, if you are interested, you can you can check you can check out this link. This is uh, this is a demo that Divinity Foundation we created ourselves just to as a demo for the community. Uh, it's an exchange rate canister. So with this, you can uh, it's a it's it's an oracle. It, it itself is an oracle. It's a smart contract that can fetch uh, exchange rate automatically. Um, so. Yeah, so it's very uh, it's very easy, um, and there are some some startups in our ecosystem. They've been using this, such as Zcloak, which is a which is a pretty exciting startup in the uh, zero knowledge space. So they use our HTTP out course, and uh, uh, and also and also uh, Bifinity, another European startup in ICP. They use HTTP out course to create this uh, EVM uh, PRC canister. RPC canister. Um, so this is, uh, you know, while a lot of other layer one blockchains, they are still in the research phase of how to how to uh, how to innovate a smart contract. We already have this uh, feature and functionality for all the ICP smart contract since two years ago. So that's a uh, um, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty um, paradigm shifting. And then the, comes to the SNS. So just now I mentioned that uh, we have 27 startups in the last 
a year and a half, they have adopted SNS to tokenize their their operation to uh, for uh, for 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 further decentralization. You know, such a at the time when I was writing this DAG, it was twenty six. Now it's twenty seven. I think um, we have an open chat. That was the first one, the pioneer in this space. And open chat was was created. It's a it's an instant messenger that you can hmm. actually I can just give you a uh let me see so so let me let me see if i can make this bigger so this is me you know just as any other typical instant messenger um these are all my conversations my conversations and uh, we have uh, we have a community from Divinity Foundation, my colleagues, <laughs> show you some insider <laughs> insider chit chat from from within the foundation. <laughs> you know, we have, we have a lively discussion, and uh, you know, you can let's say Lomash, our VP of Growth, just made a comment, and I can do a da 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 and do a thing. Can I, I see? Yeah, so, I can so this, do, this you know, looks the, similar to like. Telegram in a way, right? I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Telegram, Telegram, Discord, yeah. or even Slack. Mm. I see. But it's uh, let me show you this. It has all the wallets. Oh wow! So that's what that's what's different. So okay. um, so it has it actually it's pretty cool. It's so uh, it's similar to WeChat and Telegram, right? You have you can have multiple yeah. one-on-one chats. You have you can have group chats, but it's a similar. It's a, it's also similar to Discord. Because you can create your community. You can create such as, so for example, we have this, you know, IC123. This is for the Chinese developers. It's a community. No. Uh, and then within the community, just, just like Discord, you can have different channels. Hmm. You can have different channels, right? Because on Discord, yeah. you have a server, you have, within, uh, you, you, can have, you, have, you, have, you have hundreds of different channels. Yes. You can do the same thing in open chat. Um, so in a way that's, it's, it's, it's even, uh, it's actually more similar to Discord and mm. also very similar to, uh, uh, to Slack. Um, I see. you know, Slack is basically, is, 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 is for all intents and purposes, very similar to Discord, except it's, it's more for the, for the corporate crowd. Um, but now you can, yeah, we, you know, true. we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of communities now in, uh, because this one has seven, has 7,000 members. I think some of the largest ones, wow. oh, the Open Chat has this one has forty eight thousand members. Forty eight thousand members, and every day there are thousands of messages, and you can embed, yeah. you know, all kinds of images, videos, and you can send crypto uh, crypto tokens to each other. You can send uh, CKBTC to each other. Yeah. So this is uh, and oh, 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 <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, 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 um... Are all these messages like stored on chain or something? Aha. Uh -huh. Or where, where are they being stored? Yes. Yes. So, mm. show you. So, this is my profile. Right? Mm. My profile is that all the, all the users I've, I've invited. And let me see. User stats. So, this shows, this shows my, uh, for example, I've sent, I've sent uh, more than 1,000 messages, 52 images. And all this, my, this is my personal data, right? So they're all stored in one canister. Yeah. And that canister is here. Look at this. This uh, mumbo jumbo, this mumbo jumbo, uh, um, uh, zero number. Yeah. This INDA. Okay. Let's, let's find out where it is. So, so this is a dashboard. Uh, this is a dashboard of internet computer. See this, okay? Yeah. Um, I see. So, definitely the foundation we build is so you can search. Uh, you can search. I'm searching for. Yeah. So I just I just copy and paste my canister ID into the search box. Yeah. Let's see what we can find. So this is oh. basically like the blockchain explorer, right? Yeah. For... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. This is yeah. basically the uh, ether scan for mm. ICP. So this, yeah. you see? So this is my canister, INDA five, right? This is uh, uh, where's my? Okay, let me, let me show this again. So this is my, this is my user ID. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a user ID. Yeah, that's my ID. And see, this is my canister. Basically, my user is so basically OpenChat team created this canister just yeah. for me. And uh, you know, this is a subnet it belongs to. Yeah. This is the controller. Uh, this is my controller, and uh, and we have we have we have a few we have a few million of such canisters. So, mm. so I'm the and I'm the only one in the world that controls this canister. I see. And that is entire... canister in in one subnet or in no just in, in, in the entire ICP. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you see all the mm. internet. Uh, let me see the canister. I think the canister is canister. This is a this is a real real time dashboard of ICP. I see. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so back to, uh, let me see if I back to, yeah, back to the, uh, my previous screen. Yeah. So open chat is, uh, is a, is a very, is a, is a very, very handy instant messenger tool. Yeah, you know, I can that, see that. Um, and et cetera. And, uh, also, uh, oh, the, the other two things we, 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 you know, we'll, I'll be amiss if I don't mention this, um, AI. Oh. AI. <laughs> Obviously, AI is all the rage, right? Who can talk about AI? Who can now talk about anything about technology without mentioning AI, right? Um, but AI uh, for ICP is uh, has a has a pretty interesting synergy. Uh, we call that decentralized AI. We we feel that uh, right now the uh, the way the AI is going, the whole industry is becoming more and more centralized, and. That's not the future we want to see. We we are we are hoping that we can build a whole AI revolution on a decentralized platform. So we call it the AI. Um, but why why ICP can do this? Because we you see, as I, I explained earlier that we are the only blockchain in the industry that can provide computation as well as data storage. No. That's right. Every every other uh, blockchain, Ethereum, Solana, you know, many others. It, they they can only provide a ledger. It's only a ledger, but ledger does not run your website. Ledger yeah. does not run any any uh, service, you know, software as a service application. You have they they will have to rely on other centralized centralized computation platforms such as usually AWS or Google, you know, if they want to create another another a, a gamify socialify or a metaverse project. Um, but on ICP, you can you can do the you can do the entire application front and back end on a, a blockchain. So uh, so we, we feel that a computation is a final anchor, you know, for to measure to measure value. Like how much you know you know what is the value of anything nowadays? Is it gold? Is it a is it a US dollar or is it a is it Bitcoin? You know, we will argue that it's probably computation power. Probably Nvidia, Nvidia H100 to some extent. Um, so that's what ICP can already provide. That's why uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of startups embracing uh, artificial intelligence uh, technologies on ICP, such as IC Panda that is trying to deploy a large language model within the canister, such as uh, Kinic that is trying to do uh, like a Google Google search. Um, but, but then for all the, for all the canisters, all the, all the smart contracts. And then the decide AI that is providing the real personhood validation. Again, um, with both front end and back end running on ICP. Yeah. So that's just more. So while we have this huge uh, AI, AI revolution sweeping through the world, there this, uh, a, a much smaller version of decentralized AI that you know this re, this is a revolution within the revolution that we're trying to <laughs> we're trying to uh, uh, provide some spark from ICP because we think this is really this is the way that it should be um, this is the way that uh, uh, whether we, whether it's about data collection or the training of large language model or the inference they they should all happen on decentralized technology platform. 
I see. And uh, actually, well, I think one question I have about this. So I've seen many other, you know, like blockchain or maybe other company who are trying to do like decentralized AI. But what uh, would, would you say that what makes decentralized AI possible on ICP is it because you have both the computation and the uh, storage yes. on chain? Yes. That's what allows? Yes. Okay. That's right. That's right. This mm. is the this is the main reason. I mean, for other for other blockchains, you know, uh, if you if you go if you if you dig deeper, where do you, where do you store your data? Yeah, it's very hard. They can, it's, they it will become inconvenient for them to answer. Ah, uh, because uh, the answer is pretty obvious. It's on AWS. Hmm. Um, uh, or they use uh, maybe they they use uh, Rweave or other uh, other uh, de uh, decentralized data storage platform. But then yeah. that you know that brings another 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 host of issues because some yeah. of them they can only handle cold data, not hard data. Yeah, and some and some of them have their own, and also also prov providing data does not solve all the problems for AI. You have to provide compute. You need to provide yeah. compute. That's the most important thing. Um, and ICP is the only technology in the entire crypto industry that can do that. Okay, last but not the least, I know I've been uh, I've been uh, overwhelming uh, our listeners with a lot of uh, lot of things and lots of uh, startups and names and uh, technical terms. But the last one, this is a this is a, this is the most difficult of all. Could a utopia, <laughs> unstoppable? Okay, it's a mouthful, so bear with me. Unstoppable, yeah. tamper-proof, open platform for independent autonomy. <laughs> so, <laughs> It was coined by our founder and chief scientist, Domini Williams, uh, who created um, uh, in, uh, Definitive Foundation. Um, so he, uh, he said he used ChatGPT to, uh, to create his coin. But Utopia is basically a decentralized uh, crypto cloud for the enterprise customers. Hmm. And there's a DAC, there's a DAC, utopia.com uh, slash DAC, that uh, you know, you, um, our, our listeners can, uh, can get a deeper look into what Utopia is. But this marks uh, a new direction, how we can grow the ecosystem of ICP, right? For the most part, in, in Web3, we are targeting retail users for the most part. Retail users to buy NFT, yeah. to play in games, uh, GameFi, you know, Metaverse, and all that, or DAX, or all, all kinds of uh, DeFi, DeFi protocols. But actually, there is a much larger universe out there that is enterprise customers. Yeah. They they have different needs. They 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 care about data security, and and they will spare no expenses trying to build some uh, inter some technology infrastructure that they can control. They can define. Um, so when I when I left uh, Amazon Web Services three years ago, even AWS as a dominant public cloud provider already started doing private cloud hmm. because that was because that's a huge business. A lot of banks, a lot of financial institutions, a lot of government agencies, you know, they want to have their own private cloud. So uh, Utopia is our answer, our Web3 version to this, uh, to this request from the uh, enterprise uh, customers. You can do Utopia. You can basically provision your own, um, your own uh, network uh, of nodes. You can define the consensus mechanism, who's going to be running your nodes and uh, how your how your own uh, uh, blockchain network is going to interact with the other blockchains, um, and we give that all power to you in Utopia. I like the name, by the way. It's a very cool name. Yeah, I think it's a very good name. It's a very cool name. Yeah. So in the in the so 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 Lem, I think this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, the six areas. Um, you know, I want to I want to highlight. I know that's a lot. But uh, but uh, but uh, you know, just just to to to, to summarize, uh, we have hundreds. We have seen hundreds of uh, of very exciting Web three applications coming out of ICP ecosystems. You know, some of them they they bring their front end to our smart contract, and some of them they build cross chain applications. Some of them they uh, uh, they started doing the AI, artificial intelligence. Um, and the, 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 the most recent one, the, the, the latest, uh, the new kid on the block is, is Utopia. Um, and then a lot of them, they have adopted, uh, uh, it's called a service network system, the SNS, to further uh, tokenize and decentralize their own operation. 
Um, so this is a very we are. I think we are sitting on the at the, at the dawn of a major uh, 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 technology evolution. Right in front of us, there is a volcano. You know, volcano waiting to be waiting for an eruption. Um, so I think the next couple of months of 2024 and also beyond 2025, it's going to be really exciting for ICP um, because of uh, because our, our ecosystem finally has finally is entering into this stage where they have you know mature applications with a very stable and fast growing user communities in all different tracks, and that's uh, quite exciting for us. And we have a two hundred million dollar developer grant to uh, encourage wow. all the developers, you know, in all these different areas, um, vertical verticals, to uh, to apply for our develop uh, our de uh, developer grants. We'll give you a grant to reduce to lower your development cost because remember you have to you have to spend cycles if you need to build uh, yeah. uh, deploy smart contract, and that is that can that can get costly if you want to build create a like say one canister for every one of your customer that can if your if your if your application takes off you have you have thousands you have hundreds of thousands of even millions of users that can the the the, the cost can add up pretty quickly so we want to make sure you can um, hmm. you know you can have a have a low enough entry barrier uh, from the get go so we have a 200 million dollar fund to support you um, that's our main vehicle to attract the most talented developers in this industry. Exciting. And I mean, I, I see a lot of different like, categories out there. Yeah. yeah pretty much. Like, I think this is the one difference, uh, Len, mm -hmm. you know, you will see from other layer one blockchains for other foundations. You know, we all have our own developer grants, but uh, you will see that others, usually they, usually they only have a categories in finance. Just DeFi one way or another. Um, but you see in the ICP, we cover a very wide range of industry verticals. So literally, if you are a developer, you can build whatever you want on ICP. Really, the sky is the limit. No. You, I mean, obviously, you can do DeFi and, and all that. But even if you are not interested in finance, you want to build a game, you want to build e-commerce, you want to build another Uber, you know, another Instagram, uh, another TikTok. Uh, you know that the canvas is yours to paint. Uh, the technology is already there. Interesting, awesome. Actually, I I have so many questions actually <laughs> springing <laughs> really? up. Non, I mean, <laughs> Go yeah, <ahead. laughs> in my head, yeah. So, it's been, um, yeah. So I guess I guess the first one I have is that I think you mentioned. So it sounds like there's a lot of things you can do on ICP, but like, would it be fair to say that you can basically? replicate whatever people can do on AWS. Now you can also do it on ICP with Utopia, maybe. I don't know. Um, for many applications, yes. But not for all the applications, right? For example, if you want to build like a game, like a first-person shooting game, FPS game, yeah, we cannot achieve the same performance that AWS can do. That is huh. basically for, for, for the, for the, you know, for the, for the best performance, centralized technology platform always, uh, at least at this point, uh, always trumps yeah. the decentralized platform. So you want to run, have a, a League of Legends that will require latency of uh, no more than 50 milliseconds, right? That's how, that, that's what's required. Uh, even ICP is already a very fast blockchain network. We cannot, we cannot go down to 50 milliseconds. I mean, we can do yeah. 100 or maybe 200 milliseconds, but not 50 at the point, uh, you know, at the moment. Mm. So, so not everything, um, but uh, but the many things, you know, many things. So, so it's yeah. it. Uh, um, Rome is not built in one day, <laughs> so we uh, so we uh, want to take on this this uh, old world piece by piece. Um, so we have to be we have to be smart as uh, you know as an entrepreneur and startup founders. We have to be strategic of what, what is it that we want to build on ICP that can really leverage uh, this powerful technology? Uh, is it because of uh, the lower cost? Is it because of the data is more secure? Is it because by using ICP, you can create use case scenarios, you can create features that are simply not available elsewhere that will be interesting to your customers? Those are the key questions that are, uh, 
you know, I think the entrepreneurs need to really ponder and think very carefully. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, regarding the utopia, right? Is it what utopia? Like, yeah. Is it yeah? Is the main objective like to get uh, enterprise customer like in in so by providing them with a private cloud network? Is yes. That right? is that, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yes. Hmm. Okay. What yeah. and what, what 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 can they do on that cloud? Then I guess that'll be my next question. Like, like oh, they can. For... Uh, they they can they can construct their own uh, uh, their own uh, internet infrastructure. Ah. Okay. You know, all the way from the bottom up, all the way from uh, well, there will be a, a network of all the nodes, right? To uh, and then they can they can determine what kind of uh, hardware specifications they want for the machines, um, and what kind of uh, what kind of uh, what kind of what kind of companies or people are allowed to run those nodes, and. What is a what is a consensus? How do those nodes form a consensus? Um, and uh, maybe certain nodes will have a superpower than others. They they have a lot of things they want to just as in any typical private cloud that they can uh, configure themselves. I see. So they can also like store their own data network and yeah, run a lot of things. Data. On yes. Okay. Yes. Create their own APIs, and so maybe you know, maybe at the at the network level, uh, there are only a few APIs that will allow users within this utopian network to interact with the users of the internet at large, just for uh, privacy data privacy purpose. So they can they have the, all the power to specify all that, hmm. because right now the internet is in a you know, it's, uh, with all the public cloud and all that. I mean, it's a, a great case is what happened to Microsoft with this uh, CrowdStrike. Right? Yeah. Everything, everything is connected, and everything was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of very important hospitals or airlines. The servers were done. That shouldn't be happening, um, especially for a lot of mission critical institutions. They need to they need to have a greater control of their own network. And sometimes that means a, a, a layer of separation, uh, you know, to 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 prevent things like um, the the cross track from ha- from from, uh, from happening. There shouldn't be such a such a severe rippling effect. Hmm. I see. Yeah, I think for the cross track, I feel like a lot of it have to do with well, if computers running Windows, and, because you know, if that, computers that too, running like that too. yeah, Linux yeah. or Mac, then you're not affected, right? Yeah, because yeah. that was only affecting Windows, yeah, around the world, and that was a big disaster for that company. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, regarding Utopia, I'm curious. Uh, so, do you have any other existing customer running on here? Um, no, right now this is still very early stage. This is very. Oh, we, just, very we just, I see. We just, we just announced this plan uh, a month ago. Uh, so, Dom, oh, really? Dom new, Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is very, very early. We're still, we are still, we're still working on the the, the product. So there's no, that, there's nothing that uh that you know that you can just plug and play and and deploy just yet. So so it's but okay. uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's on our it's on our roadmap. So we are we are all very excited about Utopia. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, that sounds very really exciting. And I think the next question I have is that so I mean I'm sure you know that on many other blockchain there's like standards right on Ethereum you have ERC twenty, ES seventy one. Mm-hmm. So as I similar standards on ICP for yes, tokens there is a NFT. so we have we have a, we we have got an ICRC, ICRC. While you, uh, it's sort of a pay, uh, paying homage to a tribute to uh, Ethereum. While okay. Ethereum has ERC, we have ICRC. Uh, we have ICRC one, ICRC two, all the way to ICRC, I think seven. So we basically we have token standard now in ICP. I see. That uh, if you if you want to say issue NFT, you know you 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 know it's very fairly easy to do. And also uh, you know on this page, um, we have been able to uh, uh, just just recently to uh, uh, to bridge the to bridge to ERC twenty. So previously, that was a uh, uh, so that was a big showstopper because we w- we were not compatible to ERC twenty. Hmm. So all the ERC twenty tokens, uh, they could not be uh, ported into ICP, but now they can. That's why we have all this uh, uh, growing number of the of the CK CK version of of the ERC twenty tokens. 
and you can uh yeah you can you can you can just very easily to uh to to deploy either the smart contract or token from ethereum into icp now i see makes sense and i i, I guess in omniti the one you show on the screen there is like omniti. a bridge right like bridge yeah to go. it's a bridge okay. it's a so omniti is really it's 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 turning a lot of heads uh let me see if i can show you the omniti uh yeah and they were one of the first to release a ruins oh, ruins ruin yeah they are very yeah. they're very active in ruins interesting um, yeah because rune, rune is like meme coins on bitcoin btc let me see if i can share this so this is omniti uh yeah so this omniti it is bigger Omni chain network. It's Omni. Mm. Omni chain hub connects and connects any chain. <laughs> mm. Yes, very. Nice. You know, powered by. Well, technically speaking, it would be uh, powered by ICP. You know, Definity is just an organization, but yeah. ICP is a, it's a. So now you see the, the difference. It, it should really be. But sometimes they feel that the Definity is more famous than ICP. So <laughs> <laughs> Definity, but uh, but but uh, hopefully over time, ICP will be a lot famous than Definity. Uh, hmm. Eventually, uh, I guess one measure of success will be people don't even know what is Definity, but people only know what is ICP. I see, like then that will brand be... association, right? Exactly. Yeah. People say, "Oh, what is Definity? That's a it's, a it's a little little organization in Zurich, but ICP, or oh, everybody knows about it." Okay, then yeah. we can take we can take comfort. You know, we have we have a, we have achieved mass adoption. I see. Yeah. So they. Yeah, they they are very active in uh, organizing um, community events. Um, very active in ruins. Mm. Uh, obviously, not doing AI as well. ICP is chain uh, the chain fusion technology. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is one to watch out for. Um, Omni is quite okay. So very ca very capable team. Yeah, I see. So this is one of the key key uh, bridge. For people yes. to use to go to the ICP, right? From Ethereum and maybe Bitcoin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And uh, I guess uh, the next question I have is what is the main con consensus mechanism? I don't know. What at the uh, ICP? So, is consensus, there, yeah? me, uh, I think you are talking about, if you're talking about the, uh, uh, the permission mechanism for the nodes, uh, we use a, a yeah. PO, POUW, a proof of useful work. Ah, okay. You, you so it's okay. it's not POW. It's uh, neither uh, you know or POS. It's POUW. Proof of useful work. It's actually very intuitive. You know, you as if you say LAM, you run a data center. You pro so you run nodes for ICP, and the ICP network yeah. will pay you because you provide a you provide SLA. You provide you know uh, you provide data storage. You provide the machines that will house the that will power the smart contracts running on our network. So the network will pay you ICP every month. So that's a proof of useful work. Interesting. It's, just, it's, it's very similar to the traditional actually uh, uh, cloud computing, you know, you, uh, except that uh, because we are a uh, different foundation, we are a separate entity to all these different IDCs. So, so the network will pay them, will, will give them in the economic incentives so that they're willing to continue to use their machines for ICP, but not AWS or Google or Alibaba or Tencent. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. And then I think you mentioned these data center from around the world, right? I guess yes. the incentive is like they earn in the ICP token. Is that correct? Yes, that's okay. right. Yeah, that they get paid in ICP. So they, and yeah, and then obviously we, we don't, we don't talk about a price, you know, on, you know, uh, but, uh, but, uh, if they, if they, if they feel this is a good investment for their, uh, capex for their machines, mm. uh, they will just continue to, uh, to renew the contract with definitive, uh, with ICP actually, with, it's no longer with definitive, with ICP community. Oh, I see. Oh, so they need to sign a contract. It's it's not like a permissionless. It's uh, uh, it, it is uh, no. There's no contract. So uh, uh, it is. Um, they need to uh, they need to submit a proposal to uh, it's called a, a, a NNS. Hmm. Remember NNS? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, NNS. Yeah, I remember that. NNS is the DAO 
that governs the operation of ICP network. Actually, uh, so 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 a, a, a historical moment was uh, was May 10, 2021, when we launched the mainnet of ICP, because previously. ICP was still a private, a private network right? that was not released yet. So technically and legally speaking, uh, Definity Foundation, we own the network. It was, yeah. nobody else can use it. No. But once, once we launched the mainnet, it no longer belongs to be Definity. ICP no longer is owned by Definity. It's owned by the net, it's owned by, it's an NNS DAO. It's uh, one of the largest actually DAO in, uh, in, in all crypto. Interesting. With, with with more than two billion dollar uh, staked ICP on the on the uh, on the NNS. So for any back to your question, for any let's say a company say, oh, I want to become a no operator of ICP. How do I do that? Very simple. You you submit a proposal to NNS. You explain yourself. This is who I am. I'm from I don't know. I'm from uh, I'm from Iceland. I have some I have yeah. some machines. Da, 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 da. I'm willing to, to do this for ICP. Um, and if the proposal is passed by a simple majority of, of all the ICP holders, yeah. uh, and then, and then you will automatically, and then you, uh, and then you, you will, you will automatically be, uh, be, uh, uh, your, your machine will be, will be, will be connected to, uh, the ICP network. Okay, so That's they have all. to run it's some all. sort of like a software, right? Is that like a yeah? Client? They have they yeah. have to run like a like a like a like a SDK just for yeah. all the nodes, um, and once they they can, so that's how they can provision their machines. So once that proposal is adopted by NNS, they will be they will be automatically connected to ICP network. Hmm. So this whole process is. Is autonomous. Is uh, is this? Uh, there's no, you know, there's, there's no definitive say. Yes, we approve. Yeah. We don't, we, we don't do that anymore. Makes it's sense. Up yeah. to the, it's up to the community. If the community votes yes, it's automatic. Okay. Cool. Cool. Interesting. And then, like, it sounds like the number of nodes probably will continue to grow, right? I suppose. We hope yeah. so. We hope so. Yeah. But right now, I think we have, I think we have enough nodes, but we need more applications. Yeah. We need more applications that can bring users, you know, that can that can bring awareness and then eventually mass adoption. Yeah, make makes sense. Um, I think the next question that I have, you know, like right now, many other uh, companies or organization, right? They have like this chain kit, right, to allow me to mm -hmm. spin up like new chain, new blockchain. I'm I'm wondering mm -hmm. with ICB technology, is it possible to create a new blockchain or something like from I don't know. <laughs> That's a like, so, <laughs> so 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 let me see. Ooh, ooh. Basically, others are learning from ICP. Hmm. Remember, I, I mentioned about the concept of subnet. Yeah, subnet. Sub, yeah. That's that's what that's what we've been doing, you know, since day one. So oh. right now we have we have thirty seven subnet. Every subnet is one independent blockchain. Ah, uh, okay, makes sense. Yeah. So so basically, others they are copying from ICP. We already we have been we have been doing it for the past three years. This is the way that ICP works. That if a subnet is say uh, is full of capacity is full, smart contract is full, uh, and then the NNS the DAO will automatically spin up a new subnet, which is a uh, which is another new blockchain to support the the growth of the ecosystem. I see. So we are so we are already doing that. But, mm. but it's good that uh, you know a lot of our peers in the industry try to try to copy what we do. So thank you very much. But that's uh, we have already been doing that for the past few years. Interesting. So when when they spin a new subnet, then I guess uh, okay, this is my uh, imagination. But they would ask like maybe one of the data center to spin up new nodes. Is that correct? Or like how? Probably something like that. No, it's a. Uh... The subnet. Actually, I can, I can, I can sh maybe I can show you this. Uh, it will be it will be good to sh let me show you this. Let's go to the dashboard. It will be easier to explain there. Sure. Uh, I think this is a dashboard. Let me enlarge the font. Yeah. See now we have thirty-seven subnet. See this guy right here, subnet. Okay, yes. Let's let's open this up. Uh, subnet. So one subnet in the ICP's terminology is just one blockchain. 
you know mm. you know as just, just as you as you as you as you mentioned just now then you know others they that's basically what they're trying to do that's they're trying to spin up a new blockchain so in yeah. our world that is called a subnet and now we have 30 37 37 right so and most of them they have 13 no machines and this is where this is the number of canisters so one canister is one smart contract yeah this number of canisters on you know on a different uh, subnet so right now we have 37 and let's let's just click anyone let's click this one okay so you see this one this is uh uh, this is the okay. So, so there are thirteen no machines. See that here, thirteen no machines. This is where they are yeah. located. So, you, so we try to follow this Nakamoto coefficient that you know try to make sure the nodes and all that they are as distributed geographically distributed as possible. Yeah, we we don't want them to be sitting right next to each other. Yeah, yeah, that would be right, bad. So. Yeah. That'll be bad, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, so this is how they, you know, this is how they allocate. This is how they uh, distribute it and all that. Um. So, um. So I think when when there is a new subnet, when there's a new subnet, then the existing node, they can participate mm -hmm. in this new subnet because every subnet, usually, usually most of the subnet they need thirteen node machine and they need thirteen nodes. Okay. Um, so you know, as a if you are one of the existing node operators, you have the option of participating if you have spare capacity to uh, in this new subnet, and then you just and then and then you can run and then you can do the calculation yourself. Is that a economically uh, profitable yeah. for you, and all that? Makes sense. And I think in the previous page, I think I just saw that there's like different type of subnet. What what are the different I saw the like application. Uh, I saw system, and then there's maybe one for like European uh, or something. Oh, yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah, this one types. is judiciary. <laughs> this one is uh, system. This one. This is the most difficult one. This is the most uh, secure one. So hmm. with no machines, um, the higher the number of no machines, the more secure it is because it takes longer to form consensus. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's yeah. more. It's more secure, but it's also slower. It's also slower, so the 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 the, the single most important one uh, that has which has forty no machine is NNS. You know that's because that's how essentially NNS subnet governs the entire ICT. <laughs> so this I is the see. most important one. <laughs> yeah. We need to we, we need to guard it with our with our lives. <laughs> yeah. Um. Right. And then there are a few others. Um. You know the system system two that has twenty eight. There's a fiduciary that is, uh, I believe, that is related to a European subnet. As you, uh, you, you, you are right. Yeah. Um, and then the, there's another one, 34, no machines that governs uh, all the SNS. So these are all basically these are you know these are more a lot more mission critical than others. Yeah. So they will have a higher number of no machines. So in our future. When whenever there's a new subnet, the number of uh, no, actually not, the other way is you know when a developer joins ICP in the future. Right now, this uh, he cannot he cannot do that just yet. But in the future, he will be able to choose which subnet he he wants to deploy his smart contract. You know he can he can make a choice. Do I want performance versus security or the other way? For example, some game developers, they say, "Oh, I want performance. I don't, I don't really care. I mean, I have, I'm more tolerant to yeah. the data security part. I don't need 13, uh, 13 nodes for my subnet. I will only want four nodes." Okay, you can go and pick the subnet that has only four nodes. That's possible. You know, while some other applications, like a, like a DeFi application, they say, "Oh, no, no, my, you know, I, I, I value uh, data security above all else." I want to go to a subnet with even even higher number of no machines, so that that option will be available in the future. Interesting. So basically, they can just choose and pick the, the subnet that yes. will be suitable for their one, right? Yes. 
Okay. So this is very, yeah, that, this is actually very similar to the traditional AWS. You know, if you join mm. a network, you're like, which region should I deploy yeah. my server? Right. It's a uh, makes sense. Yeah. You want you, you want the connection speed to be fast. Yes. Um. Also, but you want also you yeah it's you yeah anyway so it's a uh, it's very similar it's, it's very it's very dynamic but obviously we we are we are not nearly as comprehensive uh as a good old aws yeah. uh, but this is uh this is a good start we're getting there interesting yeah okay now i think i have a much better understanding of that yeah for sure mm -hmm. so um actually maybe let's pivot a bit and talk about the the people and the team behind you know the icp Actually, that's mm -hmm. one thing I'm also quite curious on. I think you said right now there's what 250 people, right? Yeah. Working at ICP. How, how many people actually like working under you? Would you say? Uh, we have a small team in Asia, so we have uh, we have uh, we have one we have one uh, engineer in Singapore, one in Shanghai. We have one program manager in Asia, uh, in Korea. Uh, so the way we work in Asia is really uh, we we collaborate with a network of ICP hubs in different countries. Hubs. So that's how we work together. Hubs, yeah. The hubs, they are, they are, they are local communities, um, but then they help, they help Definitive Foundation to uh, to grow the local ICP ecosystem. I see. Okay. Ah, I see. So like similar to ICP Japan, for example, that would be one exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, ICP Japan. Yeah, yeah. You, that, that's how yeah. that's how we met. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like ICP yeah. Hub Japan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, with with a pre lean team, and I guess your focus is just mainly for the Asian market, right? So basically, yes. just around Asian, okay. Yeah, because Asia is very, uh, is very important for ICP and also for just for in general for crypto in our business. I, I think um, so too. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I think I think we, we don't need to we don't need to explain that too much to our audience. Yeah. It's uh, everybody understand the, yes. the the pivotal importance of Asia market. I see, and then I, I guess your team would interact and work with the other team member all over the world, right? It's pretty much a that's full right. So, team. so my role is special in that uh, we, you know, I, you know, my team, we we need to we need to work on many different things uh, with uh, uh, with my with our counterparts from from other from other teams in the foundation. So, we, for example, we we also work with investors. Investors, mm. H investors. We, we we do a lot of interviews uh, for the for the uh, for the developers who apply for our de uh, developer grants. Yeah. Usually that is done by the global uh, DevRel growth team. But in Asia, because of the time zone, because of the language yeah. um, challenge, uh, so so we we are a big part of that process as well. Um, we 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 work with governments. We work with uh, uh, a lot of incubators and uh, uh, especially communities to organize events. Um, so yeah, so you know what? At a global level, all these different tasks are handled by different teams. In mm. Asia, we really have to be we have to we have to work with all the stakeholders. Um, so that's you know that's what makes this job really interesting and uh, and quite exciting. I bet yeah. So sounds like in 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 your Typical day, you probably get in touch with so many different uh, people and different organization, right? On a daily yeah. basis, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's uh you know Asia. It's uh it's there's never a dull moment, you know. At some at one you know at some uh some time ago, everyone was in was in China, was in Shanghai, yeah. and then everybody 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 has gone to other countries. Singapore became really hot. Twenty twenty four nine. Yeah. Right, and then and then Hong Kong said, no, no, no. We, you know, we, you know, you know, we won. We, we, we are the regional center for Web three, and then we have Web three festival in Hong Kong, uh, and we enter into this bit of a, a tale of two cities between Singapore and Hong Kong. Yeah, and then Japan, and then Korea is like, no, 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 no. We, you know, we can even beat Binance in our <laughs> home market, <laughs> you know, with our upbeat and with our upbeat and big thumb and all that. Yeah. Um. So Korea is. Is 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 you know has, is, you know stand up stand up very strongly on their, on their own, and then Japan is like no 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 Japan we we have the government support <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and uh, so it's uh, there's never a down moment in Asia. It's, uh, well, at the same time you have Indonesia, you know Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, yeah. you know all the different countries contribute. Uh, they try to leverage their different different strengths. Sometimes that is. 
that is the weather. <laughs> Sometimes that is uh, that is the climate, uh, the pleasant pleasant weather. Sometimes it's the population, the young population. Hmm. Sometimes it's the uh, government government's attitude, the openness yeah. of the government. Sometimes it's a it's a, it's a homegrown um, a financial sector. Um, like in the case of uh, Singapore, they know they they are very experienced of 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 embracing the, you know all the all the new technology waves and all that. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very it's there's no there's no uh, you know there's no there's no easy way to grow the ecosystem. But uh, at least in Asia, it's very fun. It's it's a it's a, it's a, it's a large variety of choices that we can do. I bet. I mean, and of course, with over what more than half of the world population is in Asia, right? I mean, obviously, yeah, very huge. And I think Web three is certainly. I feel like the center of Web three will probably be more shifted more toward Asia. I mean, of course, US and I think some part of Europe is still somewhat very strong. I expect the US, but I think in the future, I feel like Asia is where a lot of the action oh, will be happening. I, I, didn't, I didn't totally. I think that actually this year is going to be a bit of a watershed moment. For example, mm. Chainlink. Uh, Chainlink is doing the SmartCon, uh, their annual developer conference in Hong Kong mm. right, for the first time. It used to yeah. be, I believe it used to be in, uh, in, in European countries yeah. for the last couple of years. Uh, and then Ethereum is doing the conference in, uh, I think in Bangkok, right? Bangkok, yeah. uh, at least in, in Thailand, in Thailand Devcon, in November. Devcon, Bangkok, yeah. De- Devcon in Bangkok. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, the, you know, all eyes on Asia. You know, while as, as we know, America and Europe, sometimes they have their own challenges. Yeah. Uh, they have great people, but, uh, for the industry right now, we need to we need to incubate applications applications that can be used by millions yeah. of users. And Asia is very Asia's population provides a huge market for that. Um, that is and and that and that is a, you know that is a huge opportunity for all of us. Yeah, I, I think so too. Hopefully, we'll see more and more applications. So with, with, with such a lean team then, I'm curious, what are some of the challenges facing your team? I mean, uh... I think for our team in Definity, um, is, uh, the biggest challenge is we have a very powerful technology, but it's not easy to explain what this technology does. Yeah. It's I not see. easy to explain the differences with Ethereum and Solana and all that, it's, uh, you know, because in crypto, um, people are so used to Ethereum. Yeah, correct. I mean, Ethereum is like the dominant, right? So It's a dominant, it's a yeah. dominant narratives. And, um, and a lot of people have made a lot of money from Ethereum, the EVM world and all that. Yeah. And they become very self-assured. <laughs> Uh, so there's this, there's only one way, you know, <laughs> to do this. If you are different, then I don't want to hear about it because I, I already made so much money. So you know, who are you to tell me, you mm. know, how to change the world? Um, so that is uh, so that kind of mindset uh, is our biggest challenge. Is when we we know we have created a very versatile, very robust. Uh, very advanced technology that can do many different things that can really change the game for many sec- industries. But it's not easy to drive the mind share in the industry. No. Right. It's not easy. Not very, very difficult. Um, and it doesn't get easier, you know, as time go, as time goes on because in crypto, because of the token, no. um, users are so used to, you have to, you know, it's, it's, I mean, there are so many pump and dump. So people want to, people don't, uh, sometimes I feel that people don't really care about value. Don't really mm. care. People only care about price. Mm. If the price is, if the price is not going up, people don't want to, don't want to, don't want to, uh, don't want to go deeper into that conversation. Mm. And that's very unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Because our technology is so much more than that. It's so much more than just DeFi and you know all the financial uh, transactions. Uh, we we really want to revamp the internet as it is, um, but that seems to be outside of the 
the usual appetite for a lot of the crypto friends. Yeah, I, I think that's actually a, a, a challenge for the whole industry, right? I mean, many people are still wondering every day, what are some of the use cases that are coming out of Web3, right? And of course, I'm, I'm a Web3 evangelist, so I... Mm -hmm. I like to you know, bring a lot more people into Web3. But yeah, sometimes they, I, I know some of the concepts in Web3 is extremely difficult. I mean, of course, we are both very deep in the industry, so it's it's much easier for us to understand the tech. But yeah, for normal layman people who have a like little technical background, I think the, the fi finance is, I think a lot of it is what motivates a lot of people coming in, or like how yeah. to keep them engaged and you know, uh, focus and build with us or just be a user i think that's going to be a challenge for the entire industry i think that's not only for icp but for the entire industry as well too yeah it, it, it has to be more than a giant online casino right because right exactly. now I think exactly. people, exactly. people say you just say Web is like a giant online casino i mean you have you know trading yeah, so we prediction. need to no, i think we need to incubate uh we need to incubate a real killer application yeah. Um, and we have already a lot of wonderful candidates for that, like Open Chat, you know, Omniti, uh, I can yeah. go on, Z Cloak, many, uh, IC Lighthouse, Mora. But, um, but as all of them, they are still in relatively early stage. Hmm. You know, we need, we need a TikTok. We need yeah. a TikTok level phenomenon to, to, you know, to really bring awareness from the mainstream, um, uh, mainstream uh, user group. To, oh wow! This, I, I I didn't know uh, blockchain can do this. I didn't know hmm. um, you know ICP can do this. Hmm. Um, we need that. So that's that's the biggest challenge. I mean, we have tried enough for lack of trying, right? We have you know the two hundred million dollar developer grants. We have issued uh, quite a few, quite a few hundred, more than five hundred in the last couple of years. Uh, more than more than five hundred uh, teams to different teams, uh, you know. Uh, most of the teams they receive um, anywhere between uh, like twenty five thousand to uh, to even a hundred thousand grants. So that's a fairly substantial, large sum of money. Uh, but still in the early days, so we we cross our fingers that uh, you know some of those early adopters, uh, the pioneers of ICB technology, they will become tomorrow's TikTok. Tomorrow's, um, you know, uh, Tesla or mm. Uber or uh, or Amazon. So we need that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's funny you mentioned TikTok. How much? Now, now that I'm curious, like, would would something like TikTok, something like Pay, PayPal, be be able to be built on ICP technology? Um, TikTok, yes, it's already possible. Huh? There is this. Uh, hmm. There is this. There is a. There's a team, uh, um, an Indian team. They created this um, TikTok on uh, on ICP, but they changed the name. The name, the name, and then the name uh, used to be Hot or Not. It used to be called Hot or Not. They changed the <laughs> name. To, yeah, like literally Hot yeah. or Not. I know. I know the the name. Yeah. The name is it, the same name from the internet famous internet startup from twenty years ago, Hot or Not. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, I guess they. So they, they they actually changed the name just to just to avoid the comparison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because because that that association may not be entirely positive. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. So they changed the name to I think Y uh, Y Rail. Uh, strange name. Um. But it's uh from a technical standpoint, yeah, it's uh it's available. It's a it's a you know it's a vertical screen. Um, it's a short, short video. Anyone can upload a video. You can have your fans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that is already possible. Uh, TikTok. Uh, what is the other? Uh, you're saying uh, what? What is the other uh, app you uh, just mentioned? That um, PayPal. PayPal. You know, oh, PayPal. PayPal. Yeah, PayPal. PayPal. Um, PayPal is harder. I think to mm. do PayPal on ICP is certainly possible. Probably possible in the next twelve months, but uh, I think the PayPal. I mean, I think from a technical standpoint, uh, it's it's quite vi it's quite viable. Mm. But the difficult part to replicate the success of PayPal is that a PayPal is not building one day. That's it true. Took, it took it took decades for PayPal to establish the credibility to be able to uh, to form all these thousands of literally thousands of corporate partnerships. No, that is the hard part. That would then, be very difficult for any startup, you know, whether on ICP or not, to replicate. Um, but, but from a technical standpoint, 
basically, if we if we, if we strip down PayPal, what is PayPal? PayPal is one person transfer transferring money to another person. Yeah. In in the currency, basically, that can be uh that can be swapped from fiat to crypto and vice versa, mm-hmm. or fiat yeah. to fiat, or yeah. whatever. Right. So from a technical standpoint, I think this is already possible on ICP. The question is, how do you get users? That's the hard mm-hmm. part. Yeah, that's, that's the hard true. part. If you, we, we have to really go back to the, you know, the humble beginning of PayPal. How did they get started? Well, we know it's it was Elon Musk, it was Peter Thiel, it was a crazy early days of internet. You know that yeah. that could be, you know, that's it's the same question that can we can we create another Disney? Can we create another Netflix? Hmm. Um, because I, you know, I I I I did two startups on on animation movie studios. Yeah. And both times we try we try to become another Disney. But I would argue that uh it's almost impossible to recreate another Disney. Mm. We just don't have the don't have don't have all the ingredients, don't have the don't have the lighting, the sun, <laughs> you know, the the soil, the we just just not there. The same by the same token, it's almost impossible to create another Netflix. Uh, and by the same token, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be equally challenging to create, you know, another PayPal. Um, not from a technical standpoint, that, but really it's about, it's about trust. How do they earn trust yeah. from all these uh, industry partners over the decades? That's a hard part. Yeah, that's true. I think, I mean, PayPal was a very interesting story, how they were built, right? I mean, because they had like viral growth strategy yeah. as well. Back then, they were giving out free money, basically. That's how they got yeah. the viral growth. And of course, they also fought a lot of the scams, I think, back in the day. Mm-hmm. They had like some, I forgot, like an algorithm to basically detect the yeah. scam and that was really what helped a lot of them so i think of course they had some amazing talent as well too back in the day so yeah i think yeah, that's so why we sometimes, have this um, hmm. so sometimes i think as some of those famous legendary um internet startups i think the biggest advantage is first mover it's first mover yeah. advantage hmm. once they're there they have the scale it's really difficult to 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 challenge them Tech, no, technology true. wise it's possible it's quite possible on icp but uh but i i i i i i i'm hoping that some you know some uh, creative entrepreneurs can show us the way how they can find a you know find a corner a blind spot of of paypal or tiktok and then attack from there um yeah. it's i think the, the most important question is for them will be how do i get early users to join where do I find early adopters? That's true. You know, which, yeah. which corner of the market has not been covered by TikTok or PayPal? That that will be tech, tech technology is an easy piece. Yeah, but they need to have that strategic uh, thinking, um, or the sometimes the, maybe the 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 street uh, the, the the street uh, wisdom. You know where where to attack where to attack the the giant. Um, that's the hard part. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I I can also imagine a bunch of other maybe I don't know regulatory hurdle, maybe distribution hurdle as well too, right? Yes. Yeah, bunch of other yes. hurdles that one need to overcome as well too. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. well, I mean, I think we gotta look forward to the future. See maybe some killer application. Yeah, it's just maybe um, three three more questions here from my side. I think one is that I'm curious, like what what is the future? You know, what what is in the future for uh, ICP and in for the Definity Foundation? And ICP. Um, I think for ICP, we uh, we we are very confident in the technology we have built, and we continue or uh, continue building. Um, we and we, we we strongly believe that uh, this is the actually the only way that a Web three can be meaningful for the conventional or well, for the traditional internet. I, I know that sounds very self serving. Yeah, because I work for Divinity, obviously I say nice mm. words about ICP. <laughs> yeah, mm. But uh, but that's what I do. That's what I that's what I believe. Um, I believe that uh, we have we have found uh, a good combination of technology and uh, and a market positioning to really uh, build a decentralized future. You know that can that can pro- that can provide thousands of if not millions of applications to users uh, that will have a lower cost, 
better, much higher data security, and most importantly, giving the ownership of the data data to users themselves. Right now, that is a non-concept. It doesn't exist. But in the future, you know, you and I, our da- our data should be owned by ourselves. Um, yeah. That will be the first. That will be the that will be the prerequisite in my in my view for all the artificial uh, uh, intelligence revolution. Um, and I and I think we, we I mean uh, we all we all believe that ICP is the closest, you know, the closest pass uh, toward that f- decentralized future. So it's a hard journey. It's a hard journey uh, to achieve mass adoption, um, and it's harder to be in ICP because you know others they can say, oh, we just want to build a a faster Ethereum. A cheaper Ethereum, and that's an easy story. It's mm. an easy narrative. A lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. They can understand that. But our story is ten times harder. Just to explain, just to understand, um, to resonate. But uh, but we believe that is the only way. So so I think that you you probably find that uh you know people in ICP we are we are a little bit stubborn. We are we usually, usually we are strong, we are passionate believer in technology. Um, so there, yeah. So yeah. So that so so there's, there's it's, it's a double edged sword. Um, it's uh, sometimes maybe it takes this kind of uh, character, the greed, right? The greed, the the perseverance to succeed, to see through this revolution to the end. Sometimes maybe uh, you know maybe maybe we're gonna we're gonna be in blind spot of certain things. So who knows? But uh, at least at least that's one thing we know for sure. We what we can do in ICP cannot be is not possible elsewhere. So this technology is unique. Is uh, I don't think too many other protocols can claim the same in crypto. Um, hmm. A lot of them that that really. If you strip down all the white paper, uh, uh, fancy white papers and all that, they are they are very much similar to each other. Um, but hmm. ICP is one of a kind. Is what 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 can be done on ICP cannot be done elsewhere. So there is a value. There is a value that we can pro- that we can provide. And if conventional wisdom you know prevails, that means uh, that means we have a future. Um, at uh, you know the most important. The most important thing for any entrepreneur is to find something that is unique, that is valuable. We think we have both, uh, so the the, uh, the but the rest is 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 about uh, how can we how can we sustain the uh, the tunnel to to get to see the light of the tunnel. I think we are I think we are seeing we're we're, get, we're getting there. We're we're in a much better position right now in the year three in the year four of our ecosystem building. Um, effort than three years ago when we <laughs> first launched the mainnet. We are, we are in a much better position now. Um, so I'm very, I'm still very hopeful. Despite of all the ups and downs of the industries almost on a daily basis. Um, that, but ICP is, yeah, has a very, has a very wide canvas. We can paint many different things on this canvas. Exciting future ahead. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to see how things will turn out in the future as well too. Um, you know, but we, we all know that I think there's a lot of tourist people who just come to the short term. <laughs> yes, of finance, come and right? go. But, yeah. But of course we, we want to keep a lot of the builders and the innovators in the space and keep, yes. keep building and innovating. Yeah. Which I think bring me to the next question here is like, who, what do you have any advice for people who want to build on ICP? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question, Lam. It's really the one, I only have one, just one advice, one piece of advice. Focus on this question. That is, how do we get users? Don't worry about the technology. Technology wise, you may not, the, you may not know the answer, like how to build this and that, but don't worry. We can help you with that. You know, the process could be torturous, could be, could be, could be difficult, but the answer yeah. is always yes. Yes, you can build this. Can you build? Can you build an Instagram on, on ICP? Yes. Can you build a TikTok? Yes. Can you build a PayPal? Yes. Don't worry about. Don't worry about this particular question. Uh, from a technical standpoint, it's usually a yes. 
the question is, you should be focusing on is how do I get users? How do I get my one, my first 1,000 users, you know, 1,000 fans in the words of, um, Kevin Kelly? Yeah. That's a question that you should, you should worry about. Don't just try to create something because you can. I think that's the, you know, the ment- uh, that's sort of the trap a lot of founders fall into. Oh, ICP technology. I, this is so wonderful. I can do this and that. Y- yes, you can do that. But that's not the most important thing. The question is, why would you do this? Why, you know, how do you find product market fit? Why, why would you imagine your users have to use this version of this product built on ICP, but not the current version that is called TikTok? That's the question you should answer. Like mm. why, right? Why, why would it, why would they come to my application? Um, just focus on that. That is, I didn't, you know, don't, don't worry about nitty gritty, not, not a nitty gritty about technology, but it's just, uh, I think, uh, you know, time is limited as an entrepreneur. We only have 24 hours to spend, but, uh, most of the, for, for many of our developers, uh, they spend a lot of time worrying about how to do this and how, how to do this. Can I, can I not do this and that, you know, from a technical standpoint, but that, that's not to me the, the, the most crucial question. The crucial question is, how can I get my, my first 1,000 or 10,000 users and mm. keep them? That's just focus on that. Yeah, I think that's very sound uh, advice, to be honest. I feel like a lot of the comp- Web3 company now, they probably have like a lot of the really latest technology, but how to get and keep users is always a challenge, right? So I think I read somewhere that I think in 2024 now, I think whoever have control the distribution, we actually will be very strong, right? So, I mean, we've seen some cases where like some people who have like an NFT marketplace now turn into their own blockchain, right? And then because they have, they already have a distribution channel. So that's something that mm-hmm. helped them to like stand out. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that might be one of the key, but yeah, I guess to, to answer that question, of course, it's going to be much longer and harder, right? Yeah. Yes. But anyway. So, so that's a hard, I think that's the hardest question. As yeah. you said, a lot of people, they become, they become a KOLs first. Yeah. Because as KOL, you have many fans. You can always you can always invite your fans to experiment with you, to sure. invite them to be the beta testers of your new application. That, yeah. that actually works. That actually works really well for for many people. Yeah, I I think so too. That's probably one way. Yeah, that's why we also yeah. see some like celebrity coins. I don't really endorse any of those, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we've seen that in twenty twenty four here you know, because they have many followers, which also mean like equal to a very mm-hmm. unique distribution channel for them. But, Anyway, for, for each their own. Um, yeah, and uh, final question. Where can people follow you and your company? Oh, just uh, share a link me, handle. just uh, uh, the link will be, uh, no, for Definity, that will be uh, definity.org or just on Twitter. I mean, everything is really, in this industry, really lives on Twitter. So yeah. uh, Definity is Twitter, just Definity, just uh, D-F-I-D-F-I-N-I-T-Y. And uh, for me, just my Herbert Yang, H-E-R-B-E-R-T-Y-A-N-G. That's uh, um, I can, uh, I can, I can probably show a website. Uh, awesome. Oh, maybe. sure. Yeah. Feel free to. It's, uh, it's, yeah. yeah. So this is really, uh, so definity. It's right here. So this is me, Herbert Young. Okay. And def- definity, no, definity, just definity. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, these are the two, um, two, to places to get the most and up to date information what's coming uh, in the community for ICP, especially when it comes to Asia. So I, I try to be I try to be I try to be a good reporter, you know, a good journalist to uh, to uh, to make sure we are all on the same page. What's going on in different parts of Asia? Hmm. I see. Awesome. Yeah, I'll make sure to share those uh, links in the show notes as well for people. And Dom, so people can also... Dom, you know, Dom is. Uh, Dom. Um, Okay. Dom just Dom's hair just show up. Who, who's Dom oh. Domney Williams? So that's our founder. Oh, okay. that's our yeah, founder, Dom. Domney Williams. Dom. So, uh, Dom. so Dom. obviously, okay. um, please follow Dom as well. So he's uh, he's a heart and soul behind ICP. Uh, he was hmm. uh, he was a founder of Definitive Foundation. So without Dom, without his vision, uh, we won't be here today. 
um, and he still, you know, after even after uh, launching the mainnet after three years, he's still fighting in the trench. He's still uh, he's still uh, uh, working with our um, researchers and cryptographers, trying to uh, like this whole utopia. This is his idea. So this uh, he's very he's he's uh, he's a true entrepreneur at heart, mm. and uh, and a very much of a technology geek um, that a lot of developers will find uh, very. Uh, very charming to talk to. I see. Exciting. Yeah. Maybe one, one day, maybe we'd like to meet him at one of the ICP hub, maybe <laughs> if he comes. Yeah. To yeah. The, the I'm ICP sure. I think yeah. I'm sure he's, uh, he's coming back to Asia, uh, again sometime this year. He was yeah. in, uh, I believe he was in uh, Hong Kong twice last year. He was in a uh, Korea, uh, early this year. And I would bet he's going to, uh, uh Bali in, uh, Indonesia very soon. Okay. For the coin awesome. fest, coin fest Asia, he's gonna be uh, doing a keynote. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah, I, I don't think I'll be there, but yeah, hopefully catch him in one of the Asia event. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome, Herbert. Well, once again, thank you so much for your time today. I think it's been a very long but very fascinating <laughs> conversation. I've enjoyed learning a lot about ICP, uh, Definity Foundation. You know the technology that you guys are building and. I mean, there's a lot of fascinating application that I see for the first time today as well, too. So I probably will try out some application myself as well to see how it is. But yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you so much, uh, Lem. Uh, you know, for uh, keeping me on this on this mic for so long. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> hopefully this conversation. Uh, you know, bring some new ideas, new ideas. You know, not only to you but also to your audience, your friends. You know, who who are really passionate about Web three, about startups. Um, you know, so that you can you can appreciate our our mission our our audacity or our struggle you know we you know i you know we, we do it's a it's a, it's a hard, it's a hard battle that we need to fight but uh we need the help from um suggestion feedback uh introduction of developers you know from all of you so thank you very much len thank you it's been a great pleasure for sure real pleasure yeah okay. And we are back to my studio. What do you guys think about this episode with Herbert Yang? I think Herbert is certainly a very talented entrepreneur. And now he's um, basically spearheading a lot of the activity at the uh, Definity Foundation to help the new ICP. Uh, I truly think that what the, there's a lot of innovation being created at the Definity Foundation and also in the Internet uh, Computer Protocols in the Web3 world. Uh, I'm excited to see where the new product, Topia, is heading. Uh, and also the number of innovative apps with new use cases, including social networks and decentralized AI that are being created in ICP is actually quite fascinating as well. I'm definitely going to uh, check out some of them. For the next episode, we'll be talking to Arisa. She's the uh, co-founder of Sega Finance. Uh, they are building innovative financial options, derivatives products in Web3 that have a $16 trillion market size in traditional finance. If you enjoyed this episode, please give a like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. Thank you for watching and see you next time.